All right, welcome everybody. Peter here. Uh, today we're going to be looking at some more art drawn by you, the viewers, and I'm just going to look at each piece, say some things about it, I guess. And uh, I know the title says judge the art. Um, that's because I'm afraid to put critique the art because uh, maybe I'm not good at that. But look, we're just going to look at it, say things about it, see what you guys have got going on artistically right now. All right, so I made this tweet right here, um, right here, where I said, want me to judge your art or at least something about it in a video? Obviously, I I wasn't good at, let's just say, say something about it. I said, post it here. I had three rules. Submit only one piece. Uh, must be your art. Must have your name on it or whatever internet name is. Also, I missed another word here. It's supposed to be whatever your internet name is. So, um, and then people submitted a bunch of things and I downloaded all the pictures and we're gonna flip through them and we're gonna look at them in random order and we're gonna look at almost all of the pic, like 90 to 90, 90 to 95% of the pictures that were submitted. Uh, a few of them we're not gonna look at for one reason or another, not because they weren't good enough Okay, none of them didn't make the cut because they weren't good enough. They're all good enough. Some of them didn't make it because they didn't follow one of these rules uh, that I put here in the tweet. Um, some of them didn't make it because they would have gotten me in trouble on YouTube, which is regrettable because I would love... S that's just... That makes me sad, that, but that's just the nature of the beast, uh, the YouTube, you know, um, but stuff like that. So if, I, if you submitted something and it's not on here... I'm sorry, and maybe I just good old-fashioned uh, missed it. All right, so, but let's get started. Going through in random order, here's the first one. Um, so the idea was that people would, like, digitally or some other way, you know, like, take a picture of their art with, like, their name on it. So, you know, like, this person just has their signature on it, so it's hard for someone to find them otherwise. But if I, as I go through these, if you see a piece you like, or if you see your own piece... Uh, if you want to like tag yourself, you know, make a comment and add a little timestamp in the comments so people can find your piece or whatever, feel free to, you know, and give yourself a shout out. Um, but to get started here, this one looks pretty sweet. I mean, to me, it's pretty obvious. This one looks like some sort of apocalyptic wave crashing down on itself. You can see it was made on a canvas. You can see the texture there behind it, right? And then it got real crazy with the there's a lot of action to it, just with all the paint splattered and specked around. I like the, it's got a cool foreground of the painting, the blue water, and then the really warm, that's, that, I think that's what makes it feel apocalyptic to me, is the, the orange background, like there's maybe a volcanic eruption back there, I don't know when it could be just something as simple as a, a sunset, which would be very peaceful, but maybe it's the dark you know, chaotic action here that makes me think it's something more sinister. Alright, here we have a cool one. And now I'll say this is um, something I do all often too. If I'm, if you've looked, watched many of my videos, you probably realize that uh, most of mine are black and white also. But if I'm going to add another color, it's usually red for some reason. I just think that that's like, I don't know, it's just kind of satisfying. It pops... No, this one's pretty cool. Uh, got some different textures here with the stippling. A little bit of squigglies here in the stippling. It's pretty sweet. It's fun to look at there. Oh. I think this... What do you think? This is an oil painting? Could be an acrylic painting. I don't know. The person didn't put their name on this one either. Oh, I see. This is a... There's like a cigar or something here. They're smoking. I think this is a self-portrait. Do you think this is a denim vest? These look like they could be, um... Like medals here. Like war medals, you know? It's pretty sweet. The, the style I like. The wispiness. But of course, maybe I like it because this is kind of how I do my own paintings too with... 
kind of like mixing on the painting instead of mixing on the palette, just kind of swirling it all together there, getting really loose and messy with it. I like it though. All right, this one is weirdly difficult to look at in the sense that it kind of strains my eyes, okay? Just because the yellow is so close to the, you know, the same shade as the white that's drawn on. Uh, maybe it's easier to look at in real life, but like it's uh, just hard to make that make out the lines. Not that it's, I mean, maybe that could be a whole reason, you know, to do it that way. Sometimes it, people make art to make it difficult, or you can have all sorts of reasons. I I don't know what reasons this artist had behind their drawings, but it's pretty cool. Like I can't see it very well. Maybe it shows up better on your monitor. I don't know. kind of school bus yellow on my monitor. Maybe a little closer to heading towards banana yellow. I don't know. This part looks like it's kind of dissected, sliced open. That was pretty sweet. I feel like I'm going to say that a lot, that it's pretty sweet. I shouldn't have pointed that out. Maybe you wouldn't have noticed. Like these little mushrooms. The shape, just like the style, the how you added the grain you know, like the grainy effect. Oh, his hand fell off. I think his hand fell off. Maybe those are just a weird little fingers. I'm not sure. No, I'm pretty sure the hand fell off. Because look, the head is cracked open like an egg. And there's like little flies, maybe fireflies flying in or out. I wonder if this is digital or uh, traditional. Or maybe it's a combination of both, you know. Maybe it's like a traditional drawing with like a digitally added like the texture the grain and stuff like that but it's i like the atmosphere of it definitely mm. well uh, i kind of like this picture how you can sometimes it bothers me with some of the photographs how they're not lit very well i think this one actually benefits from the fact that it's you know this corner of the picture is darker and you can see the grain of the the paper and stuff like that, right? Like the the depth of the eyes, the way they sink back into the the skull and the rest of it here is just kind of hanging like moss down off the bottom of it. I mean haunting. I like kind of zooming out sometimes because it kind of get like a different idea about it it all kind of you know like you can kind of get like the thumbnail feeling and then zooming in you can get another feeling <laughs> okay so obviously the first thing i noticed was that one of his eyes is askew uh, and then i noticed that his mustache is a little lopsided and then, after all of that, I notice that there's this lurking shadow beast, you know, crawling up behind him, putting a hand on his shoulder. It's funny how I notice the things in that order. Like, maybe I should have been way more terrified of the, the shadow beast behind him, right off the bat. You think this is a self-portrait? You think this is supposed to mean something about his psyche or his uh, emotions or something? I don't know. What do you think this is painted on? A piece of wood? I think it might be a piece of wood. Wood panel. That's a fun little style right here. Looks like it's done with a, a brush pen for the lines. Maybe some, yeah, maybe like, I mean, I don't know. I don't know markers well enough to speculate what kind of markers these were. I mean, I would guess Copic markers, but there, there's a million different type of markers that all kind of more or less look the same. You know, or alcohol-based markers and stuff like that. I like these little, these little roots, little sprouts coming off the edges there. Pretty sweet. The color scheme is fun. Interesting how the inside of the skull is not, you know, like a deep dark shadows, but bright yellow, like as if it's lit in there. Something that is living in there. Maybe it's a house or just like a more of a jack-o'-lantern type thing. Or also something dripping out of there, like honey. It's pretty sweet. 
little digital digital action. I wonder what you'd. I mean, I like it, but th- this kind of thing where I'm not as this isn't the type of thing that I usually do, right? I just sit here and appreciate it, and also at the same time, like wonder like how you do it. Is this like a serious? I mean, I, it kind of looks like a mask, but is it like something to do with masks in Photoshop? Like, do you get these weird, le- you know, like, I don't know. Maybe you just keep on toying around with things, playing around with them, get it till you want it right, keep tweaking it, twisting the levels. That's the half the time I do mess around with digital stuff. I just keep sliding knobs and j- adjusting things till I get it how I want. But this definitely looks awesome. I like that a lot. All right, all right. This looks like... What do you think these are? Could be watercolors. Or maybe gouache, I don't know. It's good. I kind of wish I could see like a straight on, straight down photo of it. But it still looks good. There were all the little reflections with the white. Yeah. See, the fact that there's white paint, I mean, I feel like this at least is gouache, right? Because it's more opaque. Yeah, like even this, I feel like those subtle reflections there on the can and on their fingers, on her lip, and on the straw there, that really ties it together. Gives it a sense of like 3D, 3D-ness, body. How do you say that? I don't know. I feel like the background is, I don't know, maybe that's fine. Makes me think it's like a, like a Coke commercial, you know, where they're just in one of the, you know, in Coke commercials or any commercial, they're so often just standing in some white textureless area. There's nothing around them. I feel like it's kind of like that. Uh, it's important. It's important to label your, your jar of, uh, dirty water. Oh, you can't see it. My face is in the way. There you go. It's right there. Well, you don't t- I mean, if you get into the middle of your painting, you can absentmindedly take a, take a picture of it. But oh, the baby Groot, so cute. Nailed it. I mean, just like the little expression on the face with the adorable little beady eyes. It's all stippling. It seems like. It looks really good. I like that a lot. Oh, yeah, it's like crisp, good, and I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, like, once again, I feel like things like reflections like that really uh, are like the finishing touch, like the, the thing that really, like if you didn't have that, it would still look okay, but the, because you have those real reflections on the eyes and it really takes it to the next level. A little digital piece here. I like. I feel like I like this just because it's so different than anything I would normally do. You know, like huge, uh, big, bold strokes like this, and the it's just like so different, right? There's probably only like three or four colors in this whole thing. Like this color is the same as this color, or this color is the same as this color, and this color, this color, this color is the same as. This color. Wait, no. This color. It's like it's like one of those optical illusions, you know, where the shadows. Anyways, no, that's cool. I like it. Just like simple, and bold, satisfying. Is she? I feel like she's like chilling in an aquarium, which normally would be a very cold, even if she was just in the water, right? Forget the aquarium part, but if you're in the water, deep down in the water, that would normally be a very cold and dark experience. And the feelings I associate with being down in the water and it's in, in it, you know, in all these, you know, like, creepy uh, seaweed type things with fish all around me 
that's something you associate with, you know, like corpses floating down there and stuff like that. But then you have this warm yellow light shining on her, which I think is an interesting, what, what's the word, juxtaposition or something, right? That kind of sets it aside. I mean, it's like a different feeling. That there are these like cliffs back here that reminds just like orange cliffs back here, which reminds me of Sub Subnautica, which is why I don't like playing that game because I am afraid of the deep water. I've only played it like once. Then some fish attacked me from behind and I alt f forward. We have some good variety here today. Look at this. Some thread work. What would you call this? Needlework? Ambrosia. Is this on paper? That's even cooler. I feel like you don't see that very often. Even got some little like freckles and stuff like that worked in there. I feel like if I try to do this on paper, I, uh, I mean, it, it, well, I guess I kind of thought that it was going in. I can't tell if it's going into the paper in some places, like poked in there, or if it's just glued on top. In some places, it definitely looks like there's thread on the other side of the paper. But in some places, it just looks like it's lying on top. Uh, in fact, I think it's just lying on top most places, because I can't point out any one spot in particular where it looks like it's the paper is punctured, right? It's still really cool. So maybe not needlework if there are no needles involved. Just thread art. I like it. You have to get, you have to boil it down to the, the bare minimum of lines when you just arranging thread like that, right? All right, now we have a guy reaching into his jacket. He's wearing a jacket over his hoodie. But I don't have very many. Actually, I mean, I do have one hoodie with an inner pocket. But I feel like normally if you're reaching into a pocket inside your jacket, you would reach into the jacket, but he's reaching into the hoodie. I feel like he should be reaching in between these. And, you know, I'm nitpicking, obviously. This is a cool, it's a digital, oops, I scrolled. This is a cool digital piece, right? I feel like this is the type of thing that it could have been done on like a iPad or something. I I tried out an iPad. People keep on suggesting to me that I get do it, get like an iPad, try the iPad Pro with like an Apple Pencil or something. I tried it out on um, when I was at Apple Store the other day. I mean, it worked pretty good. I just can't really justify spending that much money on it since I don't have it really any other uh, use for an iPad. And everything I've got works all right right now. This looks really good though, like the the profile of the face and everything, the proportions and it, everything's perfect. I have like the hardest time for me when I do like faces like this is getting like the mouth and the lips right, right here. For some reason that really gives me a lot of trouble, but she got it perfectly. Yeah. All right, all right. Got some Buddy Holly fan art here. Just like a, uh... now uh, at first I thought this is like vector art or something. But then I thought I could see like texture of like of like markers, but then I think that's just the reflection in the glass. Taking a picture because the this person took a picture of the screen instead of saving it, probably because they did. It's too much trouble to get something from their computer to their phone to post it on Twitter. That's the only thing I can I can guess. Anyways, the point is, we can see the art. I'm making a mountain out of molehill, obviously. Sweet, though. The, the, the minimal use of uh, color here kind of makes it look like he's playing guitar hero guitar. Which, I mean, would still be awesome, but I like it. Kind of want to, it kind of inspires me to try that some more. Just, like, draw a whole picture and then just have one, one or two tiny places where there's some color. All right, that is pretty scary. Even though it's like a kind of a, a warm comical style as a terrifying subject, right? Is this all her hair, by the way? It almost, I thought she was sitting in a big puffy chair at first.
I think it's all her hair. Maybe it's one of those times in a horror movie where you're like doing something and you're scared. You know there's someone around and then poof, a huge disembodied eyeball opens up right behind you. I hate it when that happens. You don't mind if I have a seltzer, do you? I don't want to lose my voice. This could take a while. Uh, we have a few of these to look at. I think we're about a tenth of the way through right now, so. I like the color scheme in this one. Though. It, it reminds me of all of movie posters, how movie posters always have orange and blue. Go look at movie posters and DVD covers. Always orange and blue, which must mean it's effective. If I remember um, from the uh, when this was tweeted at me, this is, um, I think, f painted foam. And it's a piece of toast, I think it's supposed to be, or a piece of bread. I guess this black block underneath is just supposed to be a, a black block underneath to support it, maybe. To present it upon. But I think these are one piece. It's an interesting project, for sure. It al I mean, at first it almost looks edible. It's kind of in the uncanny valley of, of bread slices. Because we don't look too closely. I mean, it could be, you know, it's like, it's like, oh yeah, it's a slice of bread. It looks slightly weird for some reason, but you can't put your finger on it at first. You know, what's off about it? Uh, you know, it's pretty convincing until you like start looking closer. In fact, if I hadn't said anything, I don't know. It's just maybe like, you know, these little spots around the corners where the crust uh, I, th I think it's just the edges, I think, that are, that are off-putting. <laughs> it's a fun project, though. All right. Scary clown action. I'm not sure if these are supposed to be tattoos, like marks, like weird eye eyebrows. Like, are these two marks, like, supposed to be, like, flat on the forehead? Or are they some sort of horn? Because they're kind of shaped like horns, but they the way they're drawn makes it look like they're f flat, like plastered and you know curving with the curve of the head. I like this. It looks like this was maybe smudged with a finger, maybe a blending stump. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of clowns, but I'm, I'm, I don't I don't have like a clown phobia like some people do. Says your nesty. Some more incredible dot work here. Oops, keep skipping by accident. I like that little mouth, like a little tongue hanging out. Nesty, isn't that a StarCraft II player? I have. I, that's probably not what this is talking about, though. It's very cute, though. I'm not sure what this is. Like what this mat hand here, like what this gesture is supposed to be. Like, is it punching itself in the side of the face and giving a stiff arm at the same time? Or I, I don't know what message I'm supposed to be getting from this. I mean, it's just supposed to be someone. Am I just supposed to just leave it at adorable panda? I mean, it is an adorable panda. But, and I appreciate the, like the gentle gradients of the dots here and that's good. This one is uh, incredible, honestly. Like, what is this? Is this a real thing? Is this a real painting? And what kind of painting is it? I have no idea if this is like watercolor. I feel like the fact that it's has such a sharp edge, it makes me feel like it's watercolor or gouache or something, you know, and there there was tape here in it, and the tape was removed after it was done. If if this is in fact a like a real painting and not a, a print of a painting or something. But obviously this is just uh very deftly rendered, these bottles. It's very satisfying to look at. The colors are beautiful. I like how these are like all crisp, you know, and there's like depth of field and everything. The background is blurry. What's that called? Bouquet? Hmm. 
so good. Obviously, this person is a professional. Or just a... Uh, extremely talented amateur, you know. It's a, it, there's always a chance that this person just pumps one of these out in their in their garage every you know, once or twice a week and then they just pile them up in their garage and no one ever knows or something, you know. But they should be a professional. I guess if you define professional by someone as someone who makes money by it or something like that. I don't know, I'm not too concerned about it. I feel like I should uh, recognize these caricatures. <sighs> these must be famous people. I'm going to guess Kurt Cobain. Is that right? I don't know about these two. These two, this one, this this face right here gives me the... Gives me the feeling of the paper being at like a slant. Like I'm looking at the paper, like this side of the paper over here being much closer to me than this side of the paper. But I think the paper was flat on the, I don't know, it's like a weird optical illusion. But yeah, I don't really know who these two people are. I probably should. Like it's no shortcoming of the artist or the drawing itself. But uh, this might not even be Kurt Cobain. It does kind of look like him though, right? If that's not him... I'm not a total idiot for not knowing. Anyways, someone tell me who these two are. I like these little hatch marks and everything. Great textures. And the dark. This I like this this hair also looks cool, but also like this way of just the just blocking in the hair in the background there. It's very satisfying to me. Oh boy. This tooth says, I can feel it in my teeth. This is uh, definitely a scan of a drawing. Which, I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's just noticing. I'm pretty sure, anyways. Um, very off-putting. I mean, just because I'm... It's weird in the best way possible, right? To be able to see all the little taste buds on the tongue... The throat disappearing down there. The knobbly teeth here. The, like a little, like it feels like the, the gums, you know, like the teeth sinking into the gum there. I have, like I have a, a lot of un, unresolved feelings about my own teeth. So this, this art is just pr preying on that. <laughs> Maybe this artist also has unresolved feelings about their teeth, uh, and that's what they're drawing on for this drawing. <laughs> I like it a lot because it makes me feel things. You know, I feel like that's the best kind of art, something that will resonate with us. So, All right. Oops. I, you can't see it because it, over here, I'm in this digital collage... I'm pretty sure this is, um, is this, what's her name? The drawing of what's her name by Napoleon Dynamite, where he spent, is, I could be totally wrong, where he spent three hours shading her upper lip or whatever. The shading doesn't look like it's there now though, so I'm totally wrong, but that's what it reminds me of, if I'm not, I'm not right. We've got a tuba here, a many-legged creature attempting to play it. Even its fingers for the buttons are more legs. It's wearing a, a skimpy sailor outfit. Resting in the desert. And uh, a very, uh, somewhat ant-like creature reclining in the background on the horizon. It is somewhat surrealistic. Like it's, it reminds me, you know, maybe if Dali were alive making collage, collages with Photoshop, he would do something headed in this direction. You know what I mean? Well, he, I mean, mostly because Dolly had a thing for ants. But also weird, you know, surrealistic s scapes like this with just sweeping tracks of land and strange creatures propped up on them. There would probably be a couple more crutches, though. I like it, though. Very cool. I like how pale the legs are. Reminds me of my own legs. Alright, I like this. 
The shirt says bees. Like the little, uh, are these, you know, of course my ignorance is showing. Are these Chinese characters? Um, but the style of scribbling faces is very satisfying to me. Like I could see like a little story illustrated with these loose scribbled characters, you know, or like little, like f very f like free form poems or something. This, this looks very Shel Silverstein, this little <laughs> creature right here. <laughs> but like these little squiggles right here. I love that. These, his neck descending into chaos and then just turning into a jacket super satisfying like almost he, the, as if the artist closed his eyes for a second here and just scribbled away without a care in the world super good all right some more very loose sketchy scribbling that ended up going in a very different direction here also very satisfying though kind of uh a more like princessy whimsical direction with got sparkles and smiles and jewelry and stuff like that i love the how the hair turned out swooping and swirling and feathery very cool it's good to keep it loose like this sometimes you can get so much more done if you don't if you're not so careful about each line right the only thing that I don't like because if I wish I feel like maybe this is where the drawing started with some of these lines right here that uh, this person went over more than once. You know, I, I feel like if these lines had been as carefree as all these other lines, it would have been that much better. These lines were like scribbled over multiple times, like it would have been. I mean, it's still awesome, but you know, it's just like I feel like it's just got to work, keep working on getting to that point of being comfortable and trusting yourself. I mean, not every drawing is going to turn out great, whether you do this or don't do it. So I don't know. I don't, I don't have all the secrets. All right, so it says morphine. I definitely don't have all the answers for this one. Do you think this is this collage? Do you think these pills are, sp does morphine even come in pill form? I don't know. Should we be looking at this? I think, I would like to think this is Elmer's glue or, or something. And they went out of their way to make the eyes much redder. This definitely makes me, oh, this is deep. It's very deep art, and we know that because it says so on it. Now you know. Okay. All right. It's definitely not boring. It's definitely not boring. It's very interesting. I love it for that. That's awesome. All right, this is the, the, like the weird, the weird cousin who like emancipated himself from his parents, the cousin of the DreamWorks kid who sat on the moon and fished at the beginning of the Shrek movies, you know, that's who this is. This is a painting, right? It's turned out really cool, yeah. I like all the little shooting stars in the background, but yeah. Also, oh my goodness, I keep doing that. Also, the um, the hair is super cool to me. I love this way of drawing the hair or painting it, I guess. I like that style, yeah. We have all this, the color choices. I like the, oh, these, oh yeah, I didn't even notice. It was so cool. Those clouds in the background, the color, it all just blends in so good. I bet that was more difficult than it looks to get that gradient there. And then the, the red outlines. All right. Oh, this is cute. Um, <laughs> I love how tiny the brain is. I'm real. It, I, I think it's supposed to be a, a plucked chicken. I mean, it's the color of a plucked chicken. 
uh, but it almost has the texture as if maybe it has, still has some feathers left on it. It has a little tank on the back and a, a tie, a beak. <laughs> it's adorable. Googly eyes taped onto it. What kind of, what does this say? I think it's supposed to say non-alcoholic. I'm not sure. It's interesting how the the spine is still there, though. Even though the head was ripped off, they left the spine. Like, where did the rest of it? I don't know. I need an explanation for that. This is a very cool style, though. I like that. I want, like, a little, a little like, five-frame animation of this thing strutting along with a little bounce in its step. Ah, another little digital collage type thing. St. Pugnacious. Oh yeah, this is, um, these, these, uh, custom prayer candles, you can see the website down here, uh, where I actually met the guy who makes these when I was in, I was in, like, Alberta, or, uh, Maybe, maybe Montana. I think I was in, near, I was like, had just finished like camping in Banff, I think. National Park. And I was at, me and my friends were at some coffee shop and we were just like, had just got done camping and we were just like, wanted to like enjoy a coffee shop. Cause we just, we had camped for like two weeks and we were just like, we just want to sit here in a building and drink some coffee. And then this guy, his name is, his, his band name or his name for an artist as a music musical artist is Zulu Panda uh, and he was doing this gig at the coffee shop uh, but after a few minutes we were the only ones in there and he was doing this gig and he was like a great showman but we were <laughs> super tired and he was like trying to get us involved and stuff and I just felt so bad that we were like not reacting at all to like he was like trying to get us to come up and sit at the front sing along and everything uh, but no, he's awesome. No, yeah, definitely check out his custom prayer candles. I bought one from him when we were there. Uh, one of the one I got has Steve Buscemi holding a lamb. It's adorable. You might have seen it one of my house tours. I think I showed it. Cool guy. He was he was wearing a, a Star Wars suit and pants, and his electrical guitar was a Millennium Falcon. He let me hold it and take a picture with it. These are pretty cool. This looks like, maybe if I had to guess, I would say these are drawn with a black watercolor pencil. Cause you know, there's like some lines here and then it looks like also ink washes, right? That's a, I don't know if I've really done that before, but I like that idea. And just the subject is cool too. These little faces squishing, being pulled apart, you know, morphed in different directions. It's pretty satisfying. It's a fun fun style. Mm. Excuse me. Some, some more digital stuff here. This one looks cool from a distance, I think. Oh, that's too far. Let's zoom back in. Uh, I want this. I want this raincoat now. This actual one that looks like this. I mean, it's actually like a bit too loud for me, I think, in this stage of my life. You know, I'm 29 now. I gotta, gotta reel it back in a little bit. I only wear things with muted dark colors. I'm back into my, uh, my emo phase, but it's just called being grown up. I think I just realized that I don't buy exciting things anymore. I need this jacket. Anyways, yeah, this looks sweet though. I like the combination of things here, the little geometric stuff in the background, and then it like it looks like rain too. A drawing of a convenience store manned by a Chinese dragon. It's a fun style here. That's kind of a thing you'd see maybe like if someone just went to the store, you know, with their sketchbook and it's just like, yeah, let me just sketch the store. Let me just get the dragon behind the counter. It's, even though it's a dragon back there, it still has like the the bulletproof glass and everything and they're reaching through the little door. Hey, 
Gotta stay safe. Alright, here we have swirls on upside down words. I th I, if I had to guess, I would say this is done with a brush pen. Uh, and it looks like this is something of a political nature in the background. Look, it says District of Columbia Circuit Congress Past, you know. I wonder if that has something to do with, I mean, if, uh, you know, there's no accidents. I mean, there are accidents, but I mean, this person chose what words to draw on top of. Sometimes you wonder, like, I mean, you can, you can choose how hard you want to try to get the message the artist was sending. You know, you could try to decipher as much of this as possible to try to figure out, you know, like what they were actually talking about in this. But also you can just look at it and soak it in too, which is also very satisfying because these are very satisfying swirls to look at, especially if you like blur your eyes a little bit. Yeah, it's almost like fur or something. I have some uh, creature. Now, if I had to guess, I'd say this was done with like a MS Paint or something. This thing is very emaciated. Also, it's out of all the creepy things about this creature, for some reason, its fingers creep me out the most. Hey, I reserve that right to be the most creeped out by the fingers. I mean, even with this neck and this nose and uh, whatever's going on right here, it's the fingers. I like this drawing, though. It makes me... You know, it's like one of those drawings that really makes you look at it and just be like, what is going on here? Like, even if you just look at it and go, ugh, like, uh, uh, you know, like, that's better than... There's so many drawings out there that, that you just look at it and you're just like, hmm, oh yeah, another drawing. At least this is, I feel like, you know, not that shock value is, should necessarily be your only value, but I don't think it is necessarily here. It's also interesting, so. I think this is supposed to be, supposed to be a take on like shadow finger puppets or something. I can't tell if this back here is supposed to be on the wall behind it, or if it's supposed to be like, rising up out of the hands like a little like a little wolf creature s spirit demon coming up out of the hands that you can summon like this you know uh, i'm not sure about that but at first i thought about shadow puppets but if it was shadow puppets then like you would think there would be a lot of darkness back here and then like a spot of light and then this would be very dark. So that, then that makes me th go back again to thinking it's just some s little wolf spirit coming up out of the hand that you can summon if you do the right hand motions like Full Metal Alchemist or something, you know? All right. Here's another one with it. You know, like, go back to it. We ha I had this tweet, you know, submit only one piece. This person submitted at least two pieces, so I just chose one of them, you know, instead of disqualifying them. It's just like, I don't know how hard that is, but it's okay. I just chose, I just chose the one I liked more out of the ones they submitted, so maybe that is a good reason to submit more than one piece. Which I, mean, I shouldn't enable it. It's all right. It's all right. It's fine. This one is very cool to me. I love all the little... Because, I mean, probably because I draw stuff a little bit like this sometimes, but just with all the swirls and lumps, you know? I like lumping swirls together and swirling lumps together. Uh, now that I look at it a little bit more, it does bother me a little bit that there's no little contour lines on a couple of these lumps, which almost makes it look like these are actually not lumps or swirls at all, but empty spaces. And which could also be the case. It wouldn't be the end of the world. But I don't think that is the case. Also, like all the eyes, I also do add a lot of eyes to my drawings. And these teeth are crazy. You know, this took a lot of patience to draw all these teeth and make them look uniform. And add all the little shading on there. Very good, very good. Wow, wow. You know, I don't really know what medium this is. It could be markers or colored pencils. 
feel like it might be I feel like it might be colored pencils on black paper I'm not like a the more I look through these and guess at what medium it is the more I get stumped and I'm like I'm not an expert but this is beautiful the visor you know I feel like this I, it, no offense but it is a little cliche to draw uh you know, like an astronaut and then something beautiful or breathtaking being reflected in the visor. But uh, you did this really well. And it, I can't deny it looks cool. It looks pretty. So, uh, hey, take it away. <laughs> this one looks like a good time. Also, I do stuff like this too. So obviously I'm a little bit partial to it. Just sitting there scribbling, scratching at it, you know, just drawing hatch marks and scribbles and squiggles seeing what happens i mean i don't know if this person had any idea when they started out what it would be but if it had been me i would have had no idea i would have just started scribbling and scratching and slowly building building it up and then probably when i got like two-thirds or three-quarters of the way through it i would have realized hey this kind of looks like a mountain with trees on it and i can draw like some docks going out into a lake here but yeah yeah i like it this is one of those ones I think I like zooming out on a little bit. Kind of like blurring your eyes. Kind of like when you're drawing, sometimes it's good to stand up, step back. Oops. All right. Boo. These are fun little ghosts. A couple of skeletons mixed in. I like those little eyes. <coughs> Excuse me. The eyes I like. Even the eyes have like a, a hint of, uh, you know depth to them so the skull has looks a little bit more 3d there's some i think there's even some subtle reflective shading there on the skull hard to tell you know the ghosts have little butts there's a bunny ghost even i don't know about giving bunny ghosts butts hey artistic freedom is fine these are cute though i like all the different little different variety you came up with here very fun. <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those things you can just keep on looking at, finding each little ghost and coming up with a little story for each one, why they're there, what they could be up to. <laughs> Once again, another one that looks kind of like my own art. Which, I mean... I'm not saying I own this kind of art. In fact, people were drawing stuff like this long before I was born. But whenever we look at things, our mind automatically makes associations. That's why we see faces everywhere, you know, and that's why people like looking at the clouds to see you know, what it reminds them of. So we look at things and that's why everyone always you know looks at things and people are always sending me messages like hey peter this person's art reminds me of yours and this and this. so anyways i'm just saying they like it especially like this part down here where it gets a little gets a little darker and deeper you know the texture gets a little thicker and sweet it's a good it's a good way to have like contrast to just have like these big empty circles like that i've tried that before also with to good effect Oh yeah, this is very satisfying. It reminds me of maybe something that would occur deep under the ocean, some sort of weird coral or sponge or something. So obviously what you would do here, no, well not obviously, but if it was me, what I would have done is drawn the top circle, I mean the top layer first, right? Just gone around, drawn the, the squiggles, and it would have just been a, a line full of a very flat, looking page right and then you go through and you make it 3d by finding every edge and just drawing a straight line down until it collides with another edge right and then uh the very time consuming part would be doing all this stippling to give it depth and shading and uh what really makes it here is that they really like went all the way along this Kind of like horizontal axis here. 
where you can see like really deep into it. It's really cool. I feel like that's one of the places when if, it, if I had been drawing it, I would have been like second guessing if I was doing the right thing. Like I'm doing like a lot of dark shading, a lot of deep dark dots right here, all right next to each other. Is it really gonna look normal? You know, but sometimes it's fine. It, real life looks weird. It just feels weird to render it in a, in a drawing. Cool tree. Looks like maybe it could be a bonsai tree. I love bonsai trees. Just because there's so many cool lines and cool little textures packed into such a tiny package, right? And this kind of captures my feelings about them. A bunch of cool textures, the, the bark twisting around, knotted up, little clumps of leaves and stuff. The way the ban branches bend and twirl and twist. It's awesome. All right, here we have a moon, I think. Yeah, I think it's some cosmic body. A very cloudy moon. Maybe these are the clouds in our atmosphere and the moon is making some kind of halo effect in the clouds. I feel like I've seen something like that before in real life. I feel like maybe this was done with sponges. A little bit of spongy effect there. We'll just keep layering it on. I bet that was pretty fun. Some paint specks, you know, kind of splatter it on there with the white to make a little bit of a starry sky effect, which is awesome. Very cool. It turned out great. It's a fun drawing. I can't, can't tell if it's just the photo quality. If these are just very fine hatch marks or if there's actually some gray there. I think they're just very fine hatch marks. It's a great clump of lines right there. Heck of a clump, yeah. I mean, I don't want to tell you how fast to do your drawings, but I feel like if you slowed down a little bit, I mean, I just feel like I can see places where it's just like a little rushed, you know? It's fine to go fast sometimes. But also, if you slow down sometimes, you can get a totally different effect that can be, you know. I mean, it's not a rush. Art's not always a rush. I mean, I feel kind of hypocritical saying that because I'm always saying, like, it's fun to just do fast scribbles sometimes. So you keep doing you. If I zoom out all the way, it almost looks like a kind of frog head up here. I don't know what we go in, like maybe like a weird frog m mermaid or something. I don't know. Oh, it's a party. It's like crazy swirling streamers. They are, what's cool about these, they have like a feeling of translucence to them and shininess. They could be, uh, it could be a, a party of telephone cords. Not that anybody has telephone cords anymore, but this could be it. I love the I love these little ones and then the more you look you see even like bigger, bigger, more gigantic ones in the background. I mean this the pink in the background is probably the biggest one of all spiraling in the background, dwarfing the rest of them. You, know, you just keep zooming out and zooming out. There's just bigger and bigger ones. These ones become tiny minuscule strings I like it I don't I have no idea what if this is paint or like crayon it could be like crayons for all I know pastels who who's to say all right this one definitely looks like it has some sort of message to it uh not that I what wait what is this I'm not good at reading big roman numerals Is L fifty? D seventy? Is C a hundred? Is D M is a thousand, right? Uh two this is like X is ten, V is five, one is one. So this is like this would be like twenty seven, right? If this is fifty, it'd be like seventy seven, right? 
Wait, no, VI would be six. I'm an idiot. Okay. I'm going to give up. Is it just supposed to be 1976 or if I just had to guess at a random date? That's usually how I do tests. I don't actually work it out. I just be like, what would be the most likely answer? Great rendering here. This really cool dripping skull. Looks like it's probably all done in pen. Maybe some, this is drawn in pen and then marker, colored with a marker maybe. And then we see here, you know, usually you'd see something like this and it's the, like the evolution of the human, you know, going from, uh, you know, like an ape gradually standing up and here we see what seems to be some sort of regression. And the roots are a nice touch too. I feel like I sit like this a lot, my neck like that. Yeah, that's me. That's me right now. This is where I'm at. Maybe right... <laughs> Heading towards this one by the time. I mean, give me 20 more years, I'll be right right here. <laughs> yeah. Someone tell me what this one means. Give me your interpretation. I love the variety here. Isn't that cool? I wonder how big this piece is. I think this is one of the ones you see in your art textbooks and you just see a picture in your textbook, you know, and it's like three inches by four inches and you're like, okay, it's okay, I guess. And then you find out in real life, it's like nine feet wide, and, you know, seven feet tall. And it's just like great to stand in front of. It's so different. It's always so different to see it in person. Cause it's like a, it's like a color scape, you know, you can, you can almost fall into the painting and you experience it in a much more visceral way. Not to say that this one is, has to be, you know, multiple feet wide to be cool, but I like it anyways. I like how these are just like huge gobs of paint here. Pretty sweet. It looks like they hardly mixed any paint at all. You know, these are just, it looks like pretty much only unmixed paint. Any paint that was mixed here looks like just, just by accident maybe. You know, when I said variety, we meant it. Here is another digital piece. Some sort of chimpanzees or monkeys. And then, I don't know who this is in the corner. If I had to guess, I would say Ewan McGregor. I don't know if I've ever seen him with a beard that long, though. Is that who that is? Is he the, the odd one out here? Or, or is it trying to say that this person is like the rest this is the definitely the scariest monkey right here this one in this corner actually that one that one's pretty scary too they are these monkeys aren't normally this scary are they i it's definitely very it's very interesting <laughs> this this one look, almost looks like it was put through that what's that that Google Deep Dream filter or something. Oh, this one's cute. Oh, this one. There's a couple of baby baby monkeys. Someone tell me who this is for sure though. This is just a cool. The red. I mean the, the yellow and blue and then the black. I like that color scheme. All right. I feel like there's probably. Acrylic paint on a piece of wood, maybe. This is pretty popular. Put X's as eyes. It's like the second or third time we've seen that. Not that it's bad. Cool tentacles, though. I like those. The tongue. I like the uh, the shading here. You know, there's like. See, they intentionally put went through like three different shades of green here. Dark green, kind of dark green. Lighter green, even lighter green, very light green, and then just white. So, I mean, there's a lot of intentionality right there, which uh, which is cool. Same thing with the hand here, you know. Mm -hmm. All of it is like that. Really cool. Yeah, I like that. Cool style. Also, is this also supposed, is this also another famous person who I don't know who they are? I like the 
the monochromatic main part of it and then the the red snakes especially the, this one is coming up out of his collar is creepy also what does this say does anyone know i like the style though just the once again i mean it's the same thing i would i tend to do is just if i'm going to add a color it's usually red but i'm going to try to mix it up some more i mean i don't know but red's so tempting so satisfying i love how the beard is drawn Super cool. I can almost feel the texture of it, you know? All right. All right, weird limbless people. Their pants full of seaweed. Limbless and wasteless. It is interesting that there are some X... There's three hands per person. Which took me a second to figure out. Very cool style here, though, with the, uh, it's like it was drawn with a, an ink that wasn't waterproof and they knew that so they could just go and, you know, take, take like a water brush or something and just spread some of the ink about. Maybe, I don't know if that's exactly what they did, but it's a, like it's very subtle here, but also very satisfying. Like, oh, these are like little pinstripe pajama pants or something. Like the blush on their faces. And on their knuckles it's a nice style i like that a lot it's all kind of uh you know transparent which makes it feel like they're kind of ghosts or something very cool illustrations right i feel like this could be like like concept art for a fallout game or something really for any post-apocalyptic movie or game or anything really cool though is this I think this is digital or what was that yeah i mean look at the water makes me think it's digital more than anything but yeah even not looking at this more i think it's digital not that that when i say is digital it's not like saying it's less it's not like i don't mean that as any sort of detraction from the art i'm not in that camp of people that think that if something is digital art it's not as good inherently just because of that okay I I think everything's art. It's all it's all gravy, okay. Some people think digital art isn't as good, and I don't know why. It seems elitist to me. I just want to see things that are satisfying, and interesting, and make me feel something. I guess, which this does. Like I want to know more about. Whatever's going on here. I love these the smoke billowing up. The gloom and doom. But also there's sun shining through in the background. Which makes me think that maybe this will all clear up at any second. But it probably won't. Alright, it says unluckily lucky. Not sure what to make of that. Maybe they're just lucky in bad ways. I can, they lose their one number off from the lo lottery and then the next split second they get hit by lightning or something. But this is a cool idea to have a, like a hanging jar with a jellyfish in it. I don't know if that's cruel to the jellyfish or if jellyfish feel things, but I mean, if it wasn't cruel or mean, I, that, I would totally do that. I mean, it'd probably be bad for it. It'd probably die very fast. And it probably wouldn't just stay right there or something, but I do like jellyfish. It's a cool drawing of it. I'm also inspired by jellyfish and the way their tendrils do all of this sort of thing. Got some... A German quote from Buddha, apparently. Someone translate this for me. I like these. This is cool though. This almost looks like a little face hanging over the edge here with long nasal stalactites or stalagmites and a, or I was covering up some of it with my face, I'm sorry. And a huge meteoric booger falling out of this faucet right here. I'm down with that. Some floating islands. I like how it's connected by thin tendrils like that. I also do that. 
I like the idea of floating islands just in general. Just because it's so impossible, I guess. But yeah, this looks cool. Another cool one. By LSD Farts. This looks like something that could be in a coloring book. That's the thing that always bothered me about when I, I was making... I made a couple coloring books, and when I was making pieces specifically for the coloring books, I they always ended up like this. And I, then I'd sometimes scan them in for the coloring book and then just keep shading them. Because I didn't know whether I wanted to keep going or... Uh, they always felt kind of half unfinished because the whole idea behind making a piece for a coloring book is that you leave it for the person who colors it to really finish it, right? Not that this is... Not that that's what this person was doing, but... I feel like it... If, if I had been the one drawing it, I probably would have tried to add more depth and contrast, you know, stuff like that. Not that's what you, not that you have to have the same goals as me, which is one of the difficulties I have with, you know, like judging and critiquing other people's art is I'm always just going to be coming at it with my own goals and, you know, my own perspective and stuff. And art is the only, it's the, like the most open-ended optional wonderful like thing in the world like you could draw anything f for any reason and i it'd be fine like cool tattoo all right this looks like a combination of ink and pencil here from a csgo player whoa that terrified me i accidentally scrolled on to the next picture this is like a, it's like one of those screamers where you're like staring intently at something and then, then this guy pops up. That was weirdly scary. <laughs> no, but let me finish talking about this one. <laughs> I like it, especially this part down here. This, this shading is very satisfying to me. It looks like he shaded it and then maybe erased, made these lines by erasing. This little guy looks cool. The little tendrils, branches here. It's awesome. The different, the varying line weight, I think, is something you really have going for you, right? That's, hang on to that, right? That's something I don't make enough use of, is all my lines are the same thickness, the same width, and you've got a lot of variety here, so that's cool. All right, let's, let's look at this one, which is uh, expertly rendered, for sure. Like, I don't even, like, what is... What medium do you think this is? Uh, this is like marker, colored pencil. I don't know, why am I so bad at that? Why is it so hard to tell sometimes? I feel like these highlights here are like gel pen. These little white bits on the end of the hair here. I feel like maybe it's colored pencil. This, the eyes, where it really sells it. And then the mouth here, yeah. Is this someone I should know? Is this a famous person? I can never tell when people are just drawing random faces or if it's like a famous person. Like, is this guy known for screaming at people like this? Is there a fly on his nose? Shoe fly. Don't bother me. Obviously, also the background is cool. It's a good, like, the, the, the simple, you know, it's very flat and simple, you know, compared to him. All detailed and fleshed out and colorful. I like it. It's scary. All right. Got like some sort of like a weird tree goddess or something. Actually, there, there's probably another one on the other side we can't see. Got some little robin's eggs in here. Or they could be anything. I don't know. I, I shouldn't assume. If this is, I feel like maybe this is summer, this is spring, this is fall. Is that does that mean the other side of the tree is dead and leafless, like not dead but leafless, like uh, representing winter, right? It's very pretty though, very pretty, well done. I feel like once again guessing, I would guess gouache. Could be wrong though. Once again, it kind of looks like there was tape around the edges. Actually, no, this looks like it's done on a canvas, right? You can see the. The shadow. Now I'm now I'm gonna guess acrylic paint. <laughs> I'm so bad at that. 
but it's a little fun game to play because of how weirdly difficult it is to tell what these are made of. I'm going to guess digital. Adorable. Reminds me of like a yellow distant cousin of a mudkip or something. Are these its hands? Oh, it chipped a tooth. Maybe it was eating like a scone or something and there was a rock in it one day or something. That's so sad. Like the, just like the minimalistic shading here, just a few little bits there. That's all you need. Is his name Bim? Is that who it is? Cute. All right. Nice little swirly tree here. Another thing. Once again, I mean, it takes me back to those uh, bonsai trees, right? Just the all the weird, cool lines of the tree trunk textures swirling and. Twisting around itself. Here it looks like there's, um, like, supposed to be, like, different colored sparkles in the leaves. I feel like maybe the background is cool, but I feel like maybe the darker, more detailed part should be in the foreground, and then it should fade into being less detailed or something. Just to that might help the help the illusion of the the background receding away from the tree. But as always, do whatever you want. You know, I don't really like telling people what to do, but I feel like do do people want advice or I don't, you know? But then sometimes when I give advice, there people other people comment and like, how dare you or whatever. That's terrible advice. I'm like, whatever, take it or don't. I don't care. I personally don't like when people tell me what to do, so it's fine. Cool Owl. Cool Owl, I just, this year, I went to the North Carolina, it's called the North Carolina Raptor House, which there are actually a lot of owls at, even though I don't think they're technically raptors. Do you know raptors are a real thing? I thought they were like a type of dinosaur in Jurassic Park, but actually like a class of bird. Like hawks and stuff, I think, or raptors. Anyways, there are a lot of owls there. So, I mean, I, I'm a fan of owls. It used to be when I was little, I would, uh, I used to be homeschooled for a couple of years, like first and second grade. And one of the things we would do is we, could, we would get owl pellets and dissect them because owls don't fully digest or fully they don't fully digest all their food so if they swallow a, a mouse or something it'll be in their stomach and then they'll barf it back up in a little pellet so you can have the pellet and dissect it and find little mouse bones in there and I guess it was like a way to learn about I don't know if we we're supposed to be learning about owls or about mice but we did it you can buy owl pellets on the internet and dissect them if you want to, it was, it's weirdly fun. Okay. It's much funner than it sounds like. If, if you're hearing me talk about right that right now, and you're like, that's so disgusting. Why would you, why is that even a thing? Just try it. You just need just get a couple of little like dental tools too to pick at it. Some tweezers or something. Just get in there. Pretend you're like a anthropologist or whatever type of people dig up, uh, dinosaur bones or whatever this is cool I feel like this is definitely uh this is definitely digital right yeah i feel like it's just this is a cool brush they're using um pretty colors very pretty colors i like the colors here a lot it says hello there's a little computer here maybe a little bit of sushi maybe a little mouth maybe so an egg a broken heart I don't know. Is this, a, is this a face? Or is this more sushi? Uh, excuse me. I'm, I don't know. I, I really like the color scheme here, though. It's just... It's kind of comforting in some way. Despite these off-putting teeth. All right. Some more stippling action here. This almost looks like to be honest, this almost looks like it was done with one of those automatic stippling pens. A 
What do you guys think? I mean, it looks good, though. No, I mean, that's basically the main... If, I'm gonna, if I see a stippling drawing and if I'm going to give any sort of advice about it, 90% of the time it's going to be to slow down, right? Don't rush yourself. If, if you're like, want to make a st stippling piece, I feel like you should just go ahead and come to terms with it taking a long time, you know? I feel like the main thing that, for me personally, that makes a stippling piece looks worse is when it looks like you've rushed yourself and you're not drawing dots, you know, you've got like a lot of little lines in there and stuff instead because you didn't carefully make, carefully place each dot and instead of you're going like this and you're making little lines or you're, you know, or maybe you're using an automatic stippling pen and just going because I feel like I did one drawing with the automatic stippling pen and it looked it had a lot of things that look kind of like this, I think, but I can't really say for sure. But even so, this looks cool. I feel like one of the coolest things here is the fact that you have like some parts of the background that are totally dark and black like that, which helps a ton. Really cool. I don't know what it's supposed to be, which doesn't really matter. But yeah, keep it up. All right. Another sweet doodle. And just because I say doodle also doesn't mean it's a bad thing because I've been calling my own drawings doodles for, you know, 10 years or so. And at one point I tried to phase out the word doodle and only call my drawings drawings, but I call my drawings doodles all the time now. It's just a, it's more of a frame of mind thing. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's it more alludes to the, the fact that I don't plan them out at all, right? But yeah, this is sweet. Very cool. Very cool. Really, this is awesome. These, this, I'm really drawn to these spikes down here. Weird, shiny stuff on them. Looks like mother of pearl or abalone or something. Abalone? How do you say that? Abalone? I think this is digital or it could be traditional and digital like maybe all the line work is done with pen and ink and then it was scanned in and colorized you know with photoshop or something this is really cool though these tentacles you know it looks like something you could see in like a comic book or something beautiful it's beautiful look at it huh look at it. just look at it Gorgeous. I really like that. These these two blue things remind me of some pot holders my mom used to have. But yeah, I love these these spikes. Freshly baked pizza demon. Oh, I want some pizza. It looks good. Like I like this. I feel like it would look this if you could scan this in and put it into like Illustrator, trace the paths, vectorize it, really clean it up some. But I feel like you know, this this stuff. <coughs> oh, excuse me. This suffers a little bit. You know, if you from if you look too closely, you just see a little bit I just said a whole lot of nothing just now the line work doesn't look that great once you look closely is what I'm trying to say if you zoom out like from back here it looks terrific I'm just saying like just try to draw try to draw this with one clean swoop right go as slow as you need to you can if you draw here, pick up your pen if you need to, and then put it right back down where you stopped or a little bit after, and draw it again. I feel like there's a lot of like, I don't know, I just feel like if you just took a little bit more care with your lines, it would look way better. Not that it doesn't look cool. 
if you wanted a piece of advice, that would it that would be mine for you. But I like it. I like it. I like all the little little asterisks and pound signs and backward sixes. Or it could just be a rotated E. This one is weird for me because it almost either looks like a weird out of focus photo, but it's probably just a, or maybe like a weirdly rendered 3D render or something. It's probably just like a weird 3D and it's just like a weird draw, digital drawing, right? I uh, like it though. It's got a weird atmosphere to it that I enjoy. I just said weird like six times in a row, but this drawing deserves it. Especially with a name like Rayman Oranges. Origins. Sorry, I've been talking for like an hour and a half. Blah. Losing my mind. It's getting hot. I used to play the old Rayman game so much. The original one that came out in like 96 or something. Yep. It's adorable. Oop, sorry, I'm bad at scrolling. And this one, of course, reminds me of The Little Prince. Anyone ever watch that or read that? I think it's a book and a little old movie. I watched the original one where they spoke French. I think it was in French. But his planet wasn't even this small. He could, he could actually run around on it a little bit. This guy has a look on his face like maybe his planet has been steadily shrinking and he didn't make plans in time to do anything about it it's a little bit disconcerting that his eyes are the same color as the dirt on his planet also his planet looks like it might not actually be dirt but actually made out of uh dryer lint or something fuzzier very cute though i like the background gradients a little color scheme there pretty little page spread here once again you know I think I might have liked it better if it was like taken straight down instead of from at an angle but it's just maybe I'm picky again this one looks fun maybe this also was done with a, either a brush some brush pen action or ver a very flexible fountain pen I feel like maybe fountain pen, a very flexible fountain pen, but that, it would have to be a very flexible fountain pen. I'm not sure. Looks like maybe they were just having fun drawing lines. And it looks like a good time for sure. It's almost like a, like a rolling sea here. Some mountains. Huh. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely clouds up here, and this is definitely rain. That I'm sure of. Say 2010, July 17th. I can't read that. It looks like it's not even a number at the end there. I'm not sure. All right, this looks like a painting on a piece of cardboard. No, this looks like a marker drawing on a piece of cardboard. Now, I am very impressed by how uniform these, this marker action is here up at the top. Very well done. And I like how the plain raw cardboard is showing through for the clouds in the background. That's a good move. And this, this is like some cool orange and pink cherry tree or something. It's very pretty. Looks like, you know, it looks like old Chinese drawings. They did always used to add these little banners and stamps. They, yeah, these usually were like a, some stamp action, wasn't it? If I, from the ones I feel like I've seen. And even the, the the clouds, the way you drew those, look kind of Chinese in style. It almost looked like there's hidden Chinese characters in the branches even, but I'm, I don't know enough about Chinese to say. Pretty sweet, though. All right, oh, framed art. Second. Gotta go get another seltzer. 
All right, actually, I actually took a little break, but I'm back now. Uh, I think this is the picture I stopped on. Oh, yeah, I was just saying it's framed art. Mm, excuse me, sorry. That's, that's what I get for drinking carbonated water. This looks good, though. Really, any art looks better in a frame. So good job on that. Hey, frame your own art. It's like giving yourself an award. It's like, yes, I'm worth it. I deserve it. I'm that good. You can go get art. You know, you can go get frames for really cheap at the, you know, at the, at the thrift store. They'll have other paintings in it usually, or they have other frames. Sometimes the frames at the thrift store without art in it are more expensive than the frames with art in it because when they have art in it, they think it's, you know, they're pricing it as like crappy old art uh, and it's just like some old print or something but then when they are selling an actual frame they're like "Ooh, this is a nice frame uh you know so it's like a little bit more anyways sorry tangent uh, Ooh, another owl this reminds me of the owl from the hundred acre wood i think because didn't ha that owl also have glasses cute it has clothes has a little cloak and a little cap well done. Pencil. There's some pixel art here. There's pixels making up the pixels. That's weird. This, th I feel like this right here is more the intended way to view it. I wasn't supposed to be zooming. If I was zooming in, it was supposed to be like a bitmap or something, you know, and, or I would just zoom in, it would just be the clear, clean, crisp pixels, but... What is this supposed to be like looking out over LA or some other or Tokyo or some other imaginary city? Something with mountains around it. What kind of other cities like this have mountains around it? I don't know. It's cute though. Are these actual horns coming out of her head or just like a cool headband she has on? It's definitely got a nice atmosphere to it though. Beautiful. It's actually beautiful. I like it. Oh, digital collage. It says so right here, so we know, okay? We don't have to guess with this one. Flowers. Put there. People. All right, this one looks like a telephone receiver right there. I'm not sure what's going on with this one. Maybe a mix between an Xbox controller and a croissant. And then this one looks like it's just like a pedestal. This is really interesting because I'm like trying to figure out how they got these different shapes. Like... If it is a collage, like what is, where do they come from? What is this, you know? What actually, this should all be other things found in reality, but they could have, could be from anywhere, you know? But it's a cool, cool collage. I like it. The background and, you know, the the ground and the sky back there isn't too, you know, it's the same cloud repeated over and over again. It's not too much to distract from the foreground. Got some photography here. Nice black and white photo. I like it. I like the pipes crisscrossing. And the con concrete parking deck. It definitely gives you a certain feeling looking at it. Oh no. So, what I'm not sure about is whether this guy is really big, this person, or this person uh, is really small. I feel like I'm imagining this person standing in a, I feel like this is a huge person standing in the ocean, in the sea, and they're I don't know. I don't want to assume too much, but I kind of, ass I wanted to think they were saving them, but then there's too much like saving They were No, there, they can't be. There's too much blood all over them. I feel like they're almost washing their hands with using them as a sponge or something. I don't know what to make of the mask either. It's cool though. 
I feel like this is digital also, but I'm not 100% sure. I feel like it is digital, though. Oh, all right. <gasps> Wait. What does it say? Watercolor sleepless. What, is that? what does the sleepless part of it mean? But it is watercolor. I mean, I guess I'm safe. I can safely say that, right? I love the hair, the curly, swirly hair. The eyes are, oops, are a little off. Sorry, I keep doing that. I keep, if I scroll on my mouse, even the tiniest bit, it goes to the next, uh, it goes to the next photo. And I also use the mouse wheel scroll to zoom in and out when I'm pressing control. So, I mean, it's, compl it's complicated. No, but these, I love how you did all these, uh, I know this took patience to do all this shading, these gradients with the watercolor. You know, it's just like, I think that just takes a lot of time to just do layers and layers. The eyes are, um, like I was saying, it's a little creepy how red they are. I'm not saying you did anything wrong there. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Maybe. Do you think, uh, yeah. Eyebrows on fleek. If I was, that's so 10 years ago, isn't it? Things being on fleek. Jerry Curl. Timeless. Truly timeless. Oh, this is pretty sweet. What does this remind me of? Uh, well, like I was saying that happens earlier, this reminds me of another artist I've seen on Instagram. I think just the way the colors are presented together. I would guess this is... Hmm, let me look closer. Oh my goodness, I scrolled, pressed the wrong button. Forgive me. I think it's paint. I think it's like acrylic paint. What do y'all think? This is, I just love how vibrant it is. It almost looks like with the color of the flesh, you know, it almost looks like it's a negative. But then the also, the, I feel like this is the type of thing that, you know, Picasso would do, making people this color. Uh, but then it can't be a negative, you know, because the, then this lion would be like blue or something. Also, I like this little rectangle here. It's a little inset. It's very satisfying. Yeah, I like this painting a lot. I can see it hanging on my wall. In a nice frame, of course. Mm, some more stippling. Very well done. So much of this one is very dense. And then there's this whole section right here where there's absolutely nothing, which is a, which is a great decision, really. It's powerful, you know, when you just, just those stark contrasts. And even these parts where it's dense here, there's still some texture, like you can still see wrinkles in there. Mm-hmm. Plague mask. I think I read that they would, you know, these are like plague doctors and they would put a whole bunch of uh, like perfume and stuff down in the end of the mask here so that they couldn't smell all the dead rotting bodies or something that they were working with. That was, that was the point of the big noses. That's what I read once or something. That might not be true at all. They, they definitely are creepy though. This one's pretty sweet. Definitely digital. Um, and very well done. I like all the different little bits of shading here, like two different shades of shading, maybe three, you know, this color and this color and then this color. And then that's a pretty cool decision to have a, a you know, a cool shading on this side, warm shading on this side. It gives a little bit of um, a sense of space that there's things around it, right? That there's blue light coming from this direction and then warm orange light coming from the other direction. There's even a, even though this is obviously like some sort of android, there's also a nice, still a nice expression on its face. A brain floating here. And even though a lot of this is very sketchy, there's a good combination of just like clean, crisp lines back there. This is the Adidas bot. I like it. All right. Oh, nice screenshot here. Oh, this looks good. This is a cool one. They've got a good combination of a bunch of different little things here. You got like hatching, cross hatching. Oh, good fine lines. 
just mm, that took that's good that's good practice right there good patience uh and then and then of course stippling you know and then even here you know i do this all the time when in doubt outline love it and then you know of course this is the part i struggle with is just making some of it nice deep dark make some of it sink into the paper like that Ooh, this one i like a lot I, I mean, I think I try to do stuff like this, but I don't know what holds me back. Maybe it's just uh, I don't have the patience to do a whole section like this. I get, I mean, I distract myself. I, you know, I do one little thing like this, and then I, I go off and start doing other little shapes and sections, and I, I get, I, I, yeah, I get distracted. And oh, I love these. Like these look like evergreen branches, you know. They're kind of starting really high up, but I guess there are trees that do that. I'm no tree expert. And then this, of course, is very powerful. The whole, the only sec, the only part in the whole drawing, you know, that has no lines. Even when you zoom way out, you can still see it way in there in the center of the drawing. But yeah, I love all these lines. Just some of these are just like contours and just they give, you know, there's even like an idea of shape. They curve around the tree, you know, if any of these curved like the other direction, it would be very kind of confusing and it wouldn't make a lot of sense, but there's, they all make sense here, which is good. I like it. I like this one a lot. This part is powerful too. The dark, deep black way back in there between the trees. Creepy, eerie. This one on the other side, after we go through the deep, dark, dank forest we can come out here and watch the sun rise or set or i still haven't figured out a way to definitively tell whether it's a sunrise or a sunset just by looking at it does the sun look different i guess if you don't know which way you're looking or if you, there's no telltale moss on one side of the tree or something i don't know this is a nice painting though I would guess acrylic. I love how warm the tree is. The 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 the, the land is totally textureless, which is, I mean, it would I would have find it. I mean, everything else in the painting has tons of texture. You know, the sky has more texture than the land, which is a crazy thing, which is I guess I'm assuming a conscious choice. Sometimes it's like that when the sun is coming up and the sky is all you can look at. Oh, look at that. You know, it's all right. You know, you can get away with submitting two pieces sometimes if it's one page spread. These are awesome. These, This is a thing I like doing sometimes where you just put down big random splotches of ink on the paper like this. Like, I'm pretty sure that's how it started, just splattering ink onto the paper, right? And then building the doodle around it. And this looks so cool. I mean, once again, I'm probably biased because I like drawing stuff like this as well. But, you know, so be it. I like looking at it. Very satisfying. I can tell you took your time with this, which is, which is great. So, yeah, keep it up. Very good. Okay, okay. So here we have... What seems to be a diagram of the anatomy of the earth, kind of, you know, like maybe this is the the crust, you know, and then it goes down the mantle. Down, maybe this is like the core of the earth. But then at the same time, it's also the diagram is constructed in the shape of a hot air balloon, which is totally, you know, not how it's like... A hot air balloon would not, I don't have all the words to describe how I'm feeling, but you know, it would never be made out of heavy rock and dirt and the earth. It's like the opposite. Maybe if I ever go to art school, I have the words to describe my feelings about art. But yeah, I like this. I like all these little shapes kind of all uh, nested inside each other right here.
All right, oh, another fun doodle here. I like all the different patterns present in this one, you know? Just all mixed in with each other. I think this one was pretty fun to do. Must have been. Had to have been. I hope it was. This one looks like a... Like a weird messed up uh, Rubik's Cube. That's yeah, cool. Keep it up, man. Oh, all right. My favorite part about this one is, once again, probably just how you kept the focus on their faces by totally summing up their bodies with just this big chunk of blackness, right? So then we have to look at their faces because that's really what it's about. It's like we're all, we get all the, like all the emotion and feeling and everything. And there's a lot of it there. I don't really know, you know, it's a little, I'm not sure I entirely like what's going on here, but it's well done, I think. I feel like this is digital. Definitely digital. Well, that's obvious when you, I was looking at like the brush strokes, but then it's obvious when you look at like the, the blush on the cheeks and stuff that it's digital, right? I don't know why, I don't know why there was even a question in my mind. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, it, the more I look at it, the creepier it gets, you know, like his little hand here pulling her hair back and stuff. Yeah. It's definitely makes me uneasy. Doesn't mean it's bad art. Definitely it's good art if it makes me feel something, right? Hmm. Rhinoceros. Rip. I heard these are like going extinct or gone extinct or... I don't know. It's sad stuff, whatever it is. This is very cool. I like all the texture in the skin, though. I can't help but think... One th it is kind of weird how this side of the paper seems way warmer than this side. It's probably just they had a warm light over here and a cool light over here. But um, I feel it does bother me a little bit. It seems like a lot more work went into some parts of this drawing than others, you know? Main, the main part of the drawing that bothers me is like this whole shoulder area. But I bet, I bet there just wasn't a lot of texture here compared to like all the cool wrinkles and, you know, gnarly flesh and stuff right here. It's probably just like a much smoother gray expanse and then... It was just hard to uh, color it all in with the same pencil without making all the pencil marks so evident. Maybe you should have like, rubbed it a little bit with your finger to buff it out a little bit. I don't know. I don't have the answers. I don't do a lot of pencil work, but I just feel like it kind of jumps out at me. Like this part looks almost unfinished or the, the rest of it, you know, like even just the front of the legs and the neck and all the face here looks a little bit more polished. But it definitely looks really cool. It's satisfying. I love these kind of textures. Whether they're on a rhinoceros's face or a piece of driftwood or some crazy cliff on the side of a mountain. I love this sort of thing. And he did a great job at, at rendering that. Super cool. Cool ears, too. Mm. This one. Super deep. Don't know what it means, but I'm guessing it has something to do with um, you know, I don't want to say drugs because a lot of people say my art is about drugs when it's not, but I don't think I'd be out of line to suspect it may have something to do with drugs. But I'm not going to definitively say that. But it's alright to suspect that. I think, but it's definitely cool. I especially like the way, oh my goodness, I did it again. The way he did these lines here, like the shading, it's very careful and intentional. Like all of this right here, it's very satisfying. I mean, it's very, it's just very crisp, you know, I can tell you took your time with it. None of this like sketchy back and forth lines that I, we have noticed some other times, just like one 
one careful line. Sometimes you have to sketch it out in pencil first so that you can confidently draw your line in pen. If that's what it takes, that's all right. And then you can erase the pencil. That's pretty sweet though. I like all the stars too. All right, here's another one. This person also submitted like four pieces and this is the only one that was, uh, I guess this, I could say it was safe for YouTube. Um, but they all looked, this is actually the one I liked least, but it's the only one I felt comfortable putting on YouTube. Uh, but they all have this, they all had this great like clean, almost kind of reduced to the bare minimum style, but still like looking awesome, right? Like what, how much, like they ask themselves, how much can I take away and still have it look like, what are the ex extraneous, what's the, all the extraneous stuff I don't need in, in order for it to be a cool piece or to accomplish what I need to accomplish? What she got in here, the Air Max 97s. But yeah, I, love, I just love like the color choices, everything about it. It's satisfying. All right. Of course I like this. Yeah. Uh, if I had to guess, this would be like a red, like a fountain pen. Might not be, but I, if I had to guess, you know, it might just be like a regular kind of maroon, you know, felt tip pen or something. But I feel like it's probably just because usually when I use a, a pen this color, it's usually because I have some random fountain pen with ink that color in it. It's like a a weird monster head with all this random stuff piled up on top of it. But I love these textures, of course, because I <laughs> it's relevant to my interests. It's a tumor. I would get that baseball size tumor checked out, by the way. Also, maybe look, work on these little sections. Just blank white space. I don't know. Is that a hole in its head or? I don't know. You do you, though. All right. All right. This looks like maybe some crazy type of reactor or something. Very prominent uh, placement of the artist's name, which is okay. Victor draws lines. Makes me think that's actually part of the art, you know? Which is fine. I love these little like tendrils of lightning or whatever going around these. It's very... You got like perspective and everything going on here with these, uh, with these boxes, right? Yeah. It looks great. You probably had to plan all that out or, I mean, I guess. Mm. More eyeballs. Is this actually like a cut? I think it's actually like a cut through the board right there. And then it's like bleeding the yellow paint. Actually. I wonder if this is like a scrap, a piece of scrap wood they found that was already cut through most of the way. If they cut it through and then that was their, their plan with it. Because I don't, I don't feel like I would have that such a cool idea to be like, I'm going to cut it and then make it bleed yellow paint. Instead of having the board be yellow and have it bleed red paint, it's gonna, the board's going to be red and have it bleed yellow paint. I just wouldn't think of it. You know, that's what's so cool about all, looking at all this art. Everyone's brain works different ways. The eyes look awesome, cloudy, mm. bloodshot, dripping with the yellow stuff. Oh. Looks like these people are all st stuck together in some sort of miasma. And this guy wishes it was all over. This person is just, doesn't really know what's going on. This person's just living with it. I think, what do you think? This is charcoal? Oh, I guess it's charcoal. I don't understand. Is there like an explosion coming from back here, you think? Do you think these are supposed to be the victims of some awful event? Is this like a depiction of Chernobyl or something? I don't know. 
I wouldn't want to sim too much, but I'm allowed to sim whatever I want really when it comes to art, I feel like. Once the artist puts it out into the world, they don't really have control over it anymore. If they don't want people thinking the wrong thing about their art, never show it to anyone. All right, Aaron. We got here watercolors and Pigma Micron. It's looking good. Strong color choices, crisp line work. I like it. Do it some more. Yeah, you've got a good thing going here. I like the yellow, the blue, yeah. Sweet, man. All right. This looks like it could be a a a, a, fr a square and some like cool cool like graphic novel or something. Kind of Mobiesque. Mobius Mobius esque or something, I don't know, but yeah, I like the, the position of like these two type the circle around this weird temple thing and then the the great blank hole above it. The hatching, the cross hatching. The other type of cross hatching. These little lines kind of snaking back and forth through it all. That's fun to look at. That's another one I like zooming out on. I think it looks cool. It kind of gets like really crisp when you zoom out, right? Kind of all solidifies a bit more. You can't see the individual lines of the cross hatching anymore. Right? So you see the whole picture more. Oof. I want to zoom out on that one. Yeah. That one, I feel like when you zoom out, that one becomes a little more 3D with this, these dark sections really sinking back behind these white orbs. I love all these tendrils. Look at that. Snaking around this bigger tendril. I feel like this is like some kind of junk demon or something. It says, what a time to be alive. Oh, ain't that the truth. That's super satisfying to look at. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Oh, got a photograph here. Two baseball bats, one with barbed wire around it and one uh, with nails in it. And I always kind of wondered about this. When you put the nails in the baseball bat, do you pre-drill the holes? Because I always kind of assumed that if you hammered enough nails into the baseball bat, it would start like splitting apart. And eventually it would become like a useless, flimsy piece of flim flam, you know? But if you pre-drill, then maybe it would maintain a little bit more structural uh, integrity. But I, I don't know. Anyways, I'm not really sure what this picture means or if it has to mean anything at all. It's definitely interesting. The, with the green light bulb and the two bats. Oh. Blue eyes, white dragon. Is this its skeleton? Now, am I supposed to assume that in the background here, is this the flag of Japan where it's very much zoomed in on? Because this could be a white flag with a big red circle, right? That's probably assuming too much. Also, I keep I keep on seeing this in a couple different ways. This, What if this was its two eyes and then its mouth opens this way between its face, like but no, I think this is its eye up here, and this is some other just hole in its jaw that like, because we have holes in our jaws like that too. We have one like right here that like veins go into and stuff. I don't like talking. I mean, he, we have a hole like, oh, maybe it's like our hole that's back here like this. It's just hard, it's hard. I don't know. I don't really know dragon anatomy that well. It's, I like these nice smooth uh, gradients in the this is a pencil looks pretty sweet and and the red in the background really does look good it really does mm. that's pretty cool drawing the little scratch on her cheek the roses that seem like I don't know if they're supposed to be like ghost hands or like the hands of a doctor with like blue latex gloves on. I'm guessing this is watercolor. 
it seems so well done, so polished. I mean, even just for some reason, like the hair is so amazing to me. These lines are so satisfying, the curls and curves of the hair and the gradients and the rose petals. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, and that subtle shadow under that ribbon right there. Just slightly more than flesh colored. Just a little darker. And is this metallic gold paint for the earrings? A little bit of a highlight there right above the lips and across the, the top of the nose there and under the eyelids. I mean, they thought of everything. It's a masterpiece. So well done. That's really cool. Hmm. Oh, this is awesome to look at also. I feel like my favorite part of it is just like the combination of the colors and how it seems kind of like loose and sketchy at first, but still it all comes together so well. Just like the squiggling back and forth but at first i thought this was just red but i think it's red and then also orange you know in most places there's like a couple things going on here i think there's red and orange here and then just orange maybe yellow yeah there's red and pink here blue two shades of green here a couple maybe two or two shades of blue and maybe some green here this is not a haphazard thing it's a cool style. It looks good. Let's zoom out on that one. Yeah. I, what if I could say that as a cool stained glass window in some crazy chapel? <laughs> That'd be awesome. Hmm. Self portrait, it says. That's cool. Very. It says a lot. I don't know what it says, but it. You know, that's the. That's often often the reason to to make art because you can't say it with words, you know. So I don't often I don't feel bad about not being able to articulate what this says, but I like looking at it. I know that. I do know that. Thank you for sharing this. It's very I just love how minimalistic it is, you know, there's no, it doesn't need like a background or anything. It doesn't need like all the pieces. I guess if it, it's kind of like assuming this is like a statue of a head that's broken apart. I don't even want to say any more about it, but I really like it. All right, all right. Got another screenshot here. Let me see if I can zoom in. All right. This looks like a multimedia piece. Maybe like a painted canvas with like some paper circles glued on and then some printed out, cut out photographs glued on. Maybe another self-portrait. Hashtag sepia. See, look, if everyone put these hashtags on all this stuff, then I would know. It's acrylic. It's canvas. It's a face. That's cool, though. No, I like that. That's, that's, I think that what really makes... I think if, if, if these cut-out hands and eyes, you know, didn't have, like, those borders around them, I think I might, I might not like it as much, but that really, really does help a lot. It looks like it could be from two different people, right? Is it? I don't know. What do you guys think? This hand and this eye? Or I think this eye goes to this hand, or this eye, eye goes to this hand, or this eye goes to this hand, or... And whose lips are they, if they are two different people? And why aren't the lips outlined? Oh. Okay, so it took me a long time to notice this guy sitting down here with his satchel. Maybe it's his lunchbox. 
that's, maybe that's his thermos right there. I can't tell. He's sitting here watching the world end, maybe. This is a this is like an exercise in cross hatching and hatching. I love all this stuff going on here. It's just fun to look at. You know, like like the sweeping how this part like sweeps and swoops around like that and kinda it's like a wave breaking up here. There's like some action and stuff exploding. Oh my goodness. There is, without a doubt, a, a sweet, soft spot deep in my heart for old ships like this with all the sails and the rigging and all the pulleys, you know, just all the ropes and, you know, to me, they're just random pieces of wood and ropes and this is and that's everywhere, but it, it's you know, it kind of plays into the way I make those random, uh, those, those diagrams that don't make any sense. Cause this appeals to me in the same way. This makes as much sense to me as my diagrams do to you, right? Cause I don't know what this does. And I make a diagram, I point out a thing that you don't know what it does. It's like the same thing, right? It appeals to my sense of wonder and like child, childlike, uh, like you don't know, you just don't know. Cause so many, so many things these days, we know how they work, and uh, which is awesome. It's good to know things. It's good to learn. But sometimes it's nice to not know. Yeah, and just this is all obviously just very crisp, clean work. I mean, we were just talking about cross-hatching, and this is, you can see it culminating here in this sort of stuff. Look at that thing. Look at it. Wow. Amazing. This is pretty. I think this is in the future. This car looks a little, it's either futuristic or this is a weird, like a electric Lamborghini or something. I don't know. I feel like we don't really have that many hubcaps that look like these this day, like that these days, but it's, it could just be kind of uh, stylized. But I feel like this, while it is a cool style, you know, and it looks kind of stylized, like, oh yeah, like, I feel like if I, it also looks very realistic, like the way the light is rendered up here and it's very washed out. This I would be very sluggish to do, to render light like this, because I want to always draw everything. If I see it, I want to draw it. But if you're looking right, I don't know, it's just, I think it's, um, it's a good, like, honest portrayal of of how light works and stuff like that. I don't really know how, how else to say it, but even even though it's, you know, up here, like it's just like blobs and shapes and stuff, but you guys know what I mean? Oops, sorry. It's pretty. Oh my goodness. Here's looking at you, pal. Beautiful. Wonderful. Eyeballs. I hate to know what a trip to the optometrist for this guy costs or how long it takes. Or what a... next. The next project for this person is to draw what a set of eyeglasses looks like. It would fit all these eyes. <laughs> oh man, this is—it's uh, like really, like wonderfully brutal. The shape is—I mean, the, the like the face is like really well well drawn. You know, like I feel like, and anatomically, like it's all the right shape and everything. But then it's like this eye explode or something did he wink too hard and then just like the very just like love just like the gestures here of this these markers i think it's just like a pink marker you know and a red marker it's just like scribbly the loose wild scribbles and i feel like there's 
what is this like dirty water splashed on here or something I feel like this is the where you do the you put a pile of red ink here and then blow on it with a straw or just maybe just blow on it regularly who knows these this reminds me of Ralph Steadman you know all of it a little bit kind of does but uh, it's a cool style really cool just the kind of wild kind of let loose you know don't hang on to it too much just put it out there okay so here is a giraffe licking the world's t tallest ice cream cone in fact it's two four six 27 something ice I just did a guess someone tell me how close I was its tongue is very long this looks like a scene that could happen it be happening right around the corner from Nighthawks by uh, what's his name Edward Hopper you know what I'm talking about that that famous painting of the the diner at night with the big glass window and the lonely people sitting inside I feel like this has the same, despite the the crazy, like almost you know, ridiculous thing that's going on here. The mood of it, I feel like, is something that could be happening in that same setting, which I think says a lot. Like the background is really entrancing me. It's like the colors chosen here and everything, and the way it. I don't know. I think I I would guess this is an oil painting, but I couldn't say for sure. I like it a lot. All right, another painting. Maybe also an oil painting. I also don't know who this is. If I'm, if this is a famous person, I'm supposed to know. Actually, no, I don't know if it's an oil painting. But I do like that you can see the texture of the canvas right here. You know, even some of the canvas showing through. At least the primed canvas. When I went to the, uh, I think it was the Museum of Modern Art in New York, one of the main things I remember about seeing Starry Night by Van Gogh is that you could see so much of the raw, unprimed canvas showing through so many of the, the paint strokes. I also like I can see so much yellow showing through here behind, like he's almost being backlit by a yellow light. And the skin tones are beautiful to me. I like this a lot. Yeah, I love this skin. I love how some people paint skin, and it's just definitely one of those times. All right, all right. The number seven, I'm guessing this is. Sorry, excuse me. I think this is colored pencils. It looks good. You doodle out the shapes. Color, and maybe outlined with a marker, right? The, the green outline looks like maybe a marker. It looks sharp though. But yeah, this looks cool. Mm-hmm. I'm just having a good time looking at all the little things in there, so. Pretty sweet. I see the YouTube play button right there. I see that. I see that. Whoa. Tall painting. I mean drawing. Oh, we got a... A lone astronaut carefully clutching the last hope of natural growth in the universe. Is he about to plant it right here? Oh, I hope it makes it. Everything's riding on this. I love the, the wreckage here. The crumbling city in the background. The silhouettes of the wreckage right here. That's a good that's a good thing to do. That's a good idea. I should try that sometime. To give it a like a sense of foreground. Then you can do middle ground uh, right here, you know, and then there's the background here. There's like a lot of different things spatially going on really cool all right 
another digital collage. Really cool. The clutches of a robot arm. I like it. Pretty sweet. I like how some of this stuff is a, it's a it's all like different. Everything has different vanishing points, so it's a little bit you know halting to look at. It's like when in an in Inception when they would twist the city around and everything is all askew and messes with your mind. Whoa. Here we have a an orc warrior or something like that. I think. So this is digital, right? This is a cool style, you know? It's like all in black and white, and I just, this, well, they they just block like an ice blast. Is this person dual wielding shields? They just do shield bash over and over again. Double shield bash. But the way that this ice blast explodes on their shield is very satisfying like all these there's like all these little uh you know triangles actually it's just a buttload of triangles it seems like ah no i see a tetrahedral shape right there but it's super super cool lots of polygons and also you know little cloudy effects and stuff all mixed together and some actual snowflakes but it looks awesome like you can see the action like poof yeah, and the, the reflection on the metal armor here looks cool. If anything, I would say, like, some of this really looks like metal armor, you know? It has, like, texture, there's, like, all this stuff, and then I feel like like the shoe has, like, no texture at all, which is a little bit off-putting. I don't know if... In, one of the most annoying things you can say to an artist is, can't wait to see it when it's done, but... <laughs> Maybe it's just a cloth shoe. <laughs> I hate it when people say that. I mean, people don't say that that often to me because, or maybe I just don't pay attention when they do. But yeah, don't say that to people. <laughs> oh, whoa! All right, this one's kind of intense for because I first of all I can't really figure out what's actually going on here as far as like the texture in the background. Is it just a lot of swirls? Or is it cross hatching? Because the I can't tell if like the the image quality is low or it's just so much texture. It's definitely cool though. You can see like the airplanes coming in the background. This guy's doing something, hacking away at something with a weird tool. It definitely looks apocalyptic. Not post apocalyptic. No, dead in the middle of the apocalypse. Definitely. Some kind of wispy smoke coming up out of this thing he's trying to get open. I don't know. Definitely very cool. I feel like w this actually, I feel like it, I'm also almost hinging on the feeling that this background was made digitally, you know, like some pattern digitally replicated, but I don't want to jump to the, because I feel like there's some swirls or something I see re repeated over and over again, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to, you know, sit. Because I feel like that's almost me saying he cheated. Not that I think digital art is cheating, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, okay. I, hair is one of the main things that I struggle with and have struggled with for a long time. I used to think I had to draw every single strand of hair. And I've combated that by just drawing a lot of bald people mostly do you think there's a just saying this as a way to maybe make the art more the art itself more powerful would there be a way to maybe try to get this message that women are warriors try to get that across purely through the art itself instead of relying on writing it at the bottom, right? Not that it's bad to, right? I'm not trying to discourage you from doing that. But um, I feel like that is one way you could take this 
and it would be even more potent. And then, even then, you could still write it at the bottom, whatever you end up doing, and then it would be twice as powerful, right? Like if you gave yourself the challenge of trying to get across a certain message without being able to use words. Of course, I'm a little hypocritical with that because I hardly have any specific message I want to get across with my art, but... Right here, here we have a cool owl. Jam-packed with detail. Look at all that. Most carefully done. Every single last little feather there. It's, kind of, it's like a mandala owl or something. A mandala. We've, it's got little reflections in the eyes. It's got tons of stippling. There's actually a, an alarming amount of stippling going on here. Which I feel like may, might be a little bit rushed. Just because some of it's like a little bit clumpy or something. But sometimes that's just... I mean... I, to be honest, that's just how it goes sometimes when you've got that much stippling to do. And you have to set your own boundaries and rules for, you know, how much time you're willing to spend on something. But I feel like with something like this with stippling, that's one thing you can always improve on is just slowing down and placing each dot more carefully. But yeah, this looks awesome. Mm -hmm. There's even little drawings in these feathers down here. Sweet. Oh. oh, up here it says, was the dead man a real person? This is a cool style. Yeah. I like it. I just like the, the way these are rendered. Like, I, I, it seems like there's maybe a whole... Sc I can't tell if these are pencil drawings on the same page or other drawings on a, on an opposite page. So maybe you've got like a whole sketchbook of these which would be interesting to look through, no doubt. It is a really cool style that I enjoy. Just the... it's It feels very comfortable, right? All right. We have some guy who looks like he's in the process of becoming a robot. He has uh, Iron Man's reactor in his chest. A third eye. His chakras are aligned. Anakin's hand. Where's that Luke Skywalker's? Or they both have hands. Or they both have robotic hands. Or neither of them. Some fan I am. His brain is exposed and he's got jumper cables attached to it. It's awesome though. I like it. The the you can just see the energy crackling around it. No, but it's it's well rent. This is another one where I wish I could see it like looking straight on, but it's kind of taken at an angle. Which I'm not like blaming you for. I'm just it's just wishful thinking that I could see it more directly. I like the all the hatching here for the shading looks good. Very cool, very cool. I like I, I, I like doing stuff like that too with all the little cables and tendrils and stuff going off to who knows where because you know what it's attached to on this end and you don't know what it's attached to on the other end, right? It could be anything. All right, all right. Abstract, acrylic, Painting. I like doing stuff like this too. In fact, I have like four of my own pieces similar to this hanging in the hallway. It's just fun to squish paint around on the canvas. I can't deny it. Similar to what I do, it looks like you didn't do too much mixing on the palette. Maybe only mixing mostly on the canvas. So even though. Uh, Maybe uh, maybe a little bit of mixing for the, like this blue looks like maybe it was mixed with like white and black, you know, maybe, I don't know. Maybe this looks like a lot of this was maybe done with a palette knife as well. Palette knife painting is a great way to go. 
Also, I feel like there could be a glare on this, which is making it harder to see like the top right hand section of this. But I like how some of it is darker right here. So the paint is darker painting. So it kind of sinks in. There's like some depth. I feel like I'm looking down into the innards of it. This almost looks like a spinal cord right here. Like I'm looking into like a crazy chest cavity or something. There's a whole world in there. It's pretty, pretty sweet. All right, we got some cakes here. Uh, on the right, a, a Lego man head, fourth birthday. And on the left, someone turning 777. Now I'm trying to figure out if there is a significance to 408 credits, 36 cent bet, and being paid 1,982. I'm guessing maybe but someone being born in 1982 uh, would be like would be like 37 right now. So what? Maybe the maybe the 777 doesn't have anything to do with their age at all. It's just how you win at slots. Oh, these have got to be those um, chocolate coins. This look, this all looks very crisp and well done, though. Very impressive. I took a, ch a cake decorating class, or at least part of one, before I stopped going. When I worked at Michael's before, because it was free to take classes if you worked there. And, uh, you know, making decorating cakes is not that easy. So, yeah, this is awesome. Very well done. Right here we have a squatting elephant uh, crafted out of clay, I guess. And it looks like it's got a bit of an attitude, I'll be honest. I would not mess with this elephant more than I would not mess with most elephants. Uh, I have actually sat on a sculpture of an elephant before. And nothing bad happened to me, but I probably would not sit on this one. So, I mean, they're, you know, yeah, don't mess with it. The closest to a real elephant I've sat on is a water buffalo or a caribou. Uh, and I could, it was, it was huge. But yeah, now this is cool. I've, I have, not too long ago, I did get some sculpted clay and I tried making some, tried sculpting some stuff, you know. And uh, it's not that easy, so like I'm wondering if there's like some wire or something in here supporting all this. Because if they use the same kind of clay I did, uh, like this would have not have held up by itself before they cooked it, you know. So I'm a little curious. It's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. All right, this strikes me as a cross section, like a like an x-ray view of a, like a little forest area. Like this is the ground right here. This could be totally way off this. And then it seems like this is like, to me, I would like for this to be like some underground hollow. And this is weird, crazy, creepy stuff, magical stuff growing underground, right? Cause look, there's like stuff dribbling down from the top. And then this is the stuff growing on the ground, a mushroom and a fern. And there's like a spider web up here and some big helical thing. And then some other vines dangling down. That's kind of how it's striking me. Which is really cool. Kind of like a fairy tale thing. Like this could help it illustrate a story or something. Maybe if there was a character or something in it. Yeah, I don't know if it needs that even. No, no, it definitely doesn't need it. For being itself. Alright, alright. What is this, you think? I think, uh, I think, uh, watercolor or digital. I don't know. This part up here, these, these red lines behind, this is definitely my favorite part right here. This upper section, those, like those orange, darker orange lines. It looks like a shattered window back there. It was very satisfying. I mean, these, I think it, this looks like a, like a white gel pen or something. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's pretty sweet. 
stuff going on in the back. There's like so many layers. That's what's so cool about this, all the different layers. You can look at one layer and then once you think you're done with it, you can find another layer to look at behind it or in front of it. Right here we have a banana bouquet. Very crisply done. Also, I like this one again because, sorry, I'm like slouching down a little bit now. You'll forgive me, right? Um, do you think this is a print? Could be a print. I don't know. Probably not. No, I don't think it is. Because, uh, I mean, I can see where they drew on it with a white, a white marker here. But I love how you can see the texture of the paper here. Like, I don't know what this is exactly, but I like it. And the inside of the peel, like the pink, the yellow. Ugh, so good. And then some of this is just plain black and white. People make the best. Some people just make the best artistic decisions. I'm so jealous. It looks great. Ryan Clout Bape. Did this, did this puppy uh, an amazing amalgamation of lines, and textures, and clumps, and clots. I like it. Even if I have to look at it like this. There you go. Yeah, that looks sweet. And it's spurting out a droplet of the good stuff right there. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Yeah, keep it up. Oh, what's this movie with uh, Keanu, young Keanu, like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? Does he, the only thing, doesn't this guy have blonde hair though? Was he really wearing this vest for the whole movie? I don't know if I've ever actually watched this movie. Sometimes I get it mixed up with Wayne's World in my head, which is obviously probably a, a huge crime for you people who grew up watching these movies, but I didn't grow up watching these movies, so, you know, I don't really care. But this is a great drawing, obviously. The, besides all of that, the drawing's great. The faces are, are sweet. Like, that's a cool style. And the background itself probably took just as long to get all of that. That's just like a lot of patience to keep doing those concentric circles like that. Oh, some graffiti. Very crisp. Probably, probably fresh stuff, you know. What does this say? Am I supposed to be able to read this? Snock? Is it an S N O C H? If I had to guess. I'm guessing this isn't actually. Is this actually on the wall? I feel like, is that actually on the wall? You wouldn't actually put that next to your graffiti thing, though, would you? Put your Twitter hand, point your Twitter handle at it. Maybe they erased that with. It's just chalk, and they erased it afterwards. After they took the picture. No, but this looks cool though. Like, I don't really know much about graffiti, I'll be honest. I'm like, that's not like really a scene that I'm in or part of at all in my life. But this is, this is awesome. I just like how, like a big, big bold pink thing, you know? Satisfying. All right. More tree twisty goodness this is like a tritone or something right you got the white you got the black and then there's at least maybe two or three shades of gray going on here as well with all the nice twisty viney stalks as well and in the background this is a totally different take on it right that's super cool this the background almost looks like an engraving with these little white lines in there they probably added that afterward. I mean, it's not a very high quality picture, so I can't zoom way in on it, but I'm guessing that's almost just like a like a white pen on top of the red, but it's super cool. And the 
these lines also right here also make it look kind of like an engraving. It turned out great. It turned out very cool. I like the way you outlined a lot of this with the, I mean, I would call it red. I guess it's kind of heading towards orange, but super cool. All right. This is sweet. <laughs> this one definitely looks like it could be part of a, like a storybook, right? About, about these two wandering through the forest. Yeah. There's a great ambiance here. And I love these little stalks and how everything, you know, that little white border around everything makes it all really crisp. And there's a texture to everything too. And I can't tell if it's like part of the paint or part of the paper or what exactly is going on. But I love the colors here. You know, that's one of those things that you don't think of right away when you're like drawing, drawing a tiger. You'd be like, all right, I got to get my... I'll, I'll get some black out. I'll get some white out. I'll get some orange and red, you know. But but no, there's like yellow and, and green in there too. Like, I think there is at least. Maybe it's just on my monitor. But it's like stuff you don't really think of. But once you put it in there, like, it looks good. It's convincing. It looks real. It doesn't look out of place at all. All right. This one's pretty, this looks like the, some sort of disaster for animals. There's like, there's like a bunny in the sky right there. This is a really cool style though. First of all, these animals are very, they look amazing, right? Like you can tell this person has some experience drawing animals and this water that the, that looks so cool. I like how there's like a lot of different little things going on here. Like the waters and then there's like, is the sky? washing down over this mountain. There's a lot of things in the air, actually. The more I look at it, the more I see. It's one of those. This is a very cool drawing, painting, whatever it is. <gasps> you think there's a bonsai tree down here? Okay, I'm getting distracted. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what's going on with this painting, but I, I enjoy it. What's interesting is this, what do you think this is? You think it's like a wolf? It's the own, it seems like it's the only thing running the other direction. This little guy right here. Who is that? Zoom. Enhance. Where's my enhance button? I don't have it. I uninstalled the enhance button. It's taking up too much RAM. This is awesome though. I like it. The sky. I have no idea what's going on, but I still like it, of course. You don't have to understand things to enjoy them. The water is almost one of my favorite parts, the, how it's like see-through, the, the color of it. Yeah, beautiful, really beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Look at his cute little stinger. Is this a bee? Is it a bee or a hornet or... I'm guessing it's a bee. I guess if I imagined a hornet, it would have like big pinchers or something, even though I don't really know how to tell the difference of them or... I mean, obviously this isn't like a scientifically, anatomically correct insect, but it's a... You know, I guess obviously because it's so adorable, but... It's knitting or sewing. It's beautiful. I think this is probably, yeah, it's like ink and markers and stuff. So fluffy. <laughs> All right. I guess I know someone is digital, but it doesn't have to be. It's a cool style though. With the kind of like a trailing It kind of reminds me of screen printing, how when you do screen printing, you do the the different colors on top of each other, you know, and here it looks like they kind of did them slightly offset. But if you really did that, they would be, you would see them all over the place. But you know what I mean? That's just kind of what it makes me think of off the top of my head, but it definitely looks cool. I like it. Yeah, that one looks cool when you zoom out also. 
then it almost looks more like a shadow behind it instead of just like a maybe that's what it's supposed to be I didn't really think about that for at first that that could be a, a shadow like if you have two different colored lights shining in different places yeah right here we have a a blockhead with a letterman jacket on or something it's such a difference between the subject the main subject matter and the background which is a cool contrast pretty sweet but I, mean, I guess this could be you know I don't know it's like is this a watercolor and then it, they just brought it up to the edge or is this like a piece of paper that got cut out and glued to it I don't know whoa the, the double helix of doom this is crazy. Look at that. I wish we had a better picture of it, but it's like this small. Zoom in and we just see... It looks like a bit like it's made out of coral. Almost. Coral and guts. And roofing materials. It's very cool. This very convincing, like, spiraling action, you know. It's very fun to look at. I feel like I'm, I can see like a little crate, like a wooden crate right there. <laughs> yeah, I just like looking at it. That's all there is to it. <laughs> all right, here we have, <gasps> this is like a, an angel going up to heaven. I think this, I think this is ink and then watercolor, maybe. It could be digital though, but I don't know, some of it doesn't, it's not the one that's giving me a weird amount of problems. Some of you are probably um, wondering, like Peter, it's so obvious, it's so obvious. Sorry, okay. I love how Earth looks in this one though. Got Earth way down here in the corner. The little continents and oceans and little little atmosphere. And this person, this thing, this golden being is shooting up here. This stuff is kind of weird. Is this supposed to be a good place they're going? I mean, it seems like it would be a good place they're going. Because they they look seem like a... I get like a good feeling about this and this. Uh, about the thing and the the destination it seems like but I don't know if I get a good feeling about the stuff that's swirling about them so yeah, it's good conflicting feelings you know all right it's a cold cold doodle working with swirls some zigzags to set it all off a sideways mouth uh-huh nice there you go. That's all it takes. This can be really enjoyable to do, you know? Just just start one little place and to just keep building off of it. If I had to guess where MVP Maya started on this one, I would guess... <sighs> hmm. It was like... It's tough. Maybe like right here. Or maybe maybe MVP Maya is left handed. They started right here. I don't know. Some you know people work totally different than me, so I don't know. Oh. Who drew this one? Selena Kyle. The weirdest thing about this one is no doubt these crazy lens flares shooting off from the weird directions. Like, what is going on right here? Is that an actual thing on their desk? Or is this, was this added afterwards? These little sh spikes of light everywhere. Like, what's going on here? It doesn't look bad. It's just, I'm just curious. So this is... 
Pencil. Look, they left the pencils in there so we know what it is. Pencil. And then... Obviously some... I think they might have drawn this on gray paper, right? If you draw it on gray paper, then you already have your mid-tones always laid out. And then you can draw your dark stuff, you know, put your shading. And then if you have a white pencil, you can come in and do your highlights. And it looks really good. It looks sharp, that's for sure. Well done. The real STDs drew this picture. Cool dude, lots of nice dark spots. So it makes it look like this is like a, the Swiss cheese of doodles, you know, which is a cool thing. Like it's a doodle doily. Lots of, lots of holes in it. Lots of cool little things to look at. It looks like a machine that Shel Silverstein would draw almost, or you know, some, some maybe Susian thing. Who knows? I like this part. All these weird little contraptions and tubes and everything going every which way. This person knew what they needed to spend time on and what they didn't, right? Like they knew they didn't need to spend a lot of time on the ground down here, right? And I don't think they spent a lot of time on these buildings back here either, right? And then they added somehow, I mean, that's pretty cool. I don't, I wish I knew how to do stuff like adding these, uh, little lens flares or is this the bokeh thing I was talking about? You know, like little blurry spots of light I don't, would that really happen like maybe it would whatever it is it looks <gasps> no is this is this person standing on the edge of a building about to jump off is that what's supposed to be happening here i just realized that is that what's supposed to be happening <gasps> please let her wings work also what is this right here are these two little things coming off the back of her dress what are this what are these little swirls is that the top her the tie of her dress or something anyways no i'm getting anyways the her hair is incredibly full we need to find out what shampoo she uses but the wings look amazing like the shading and the lighting on those are awesome and the and there's a great like it really looks convincing like there's a bright light right in front of her like you can see that right here it's like shining around her I feel like a, a lot of the stuff I do, I kind of accidentally do. Kind of stumble my way into a lot of things. I feel like it'd be pretty difficult to stumble your way into some lighting effects like these. It's very intentional. Right, so we have some sort of uh, forest nymph or something here. With a green ball. Do you think, think it uses it to tell the future? Tell the past, tell the present. This looks like maybe colored pencils or crayons or something. I would say colored pencils, but there's like no, it could just be markers. It's like too much texture for markers, but not enough texture for colored pencils. And I'm just very confused is all, that's all. Maybe it's just a rough paper or something. I'm getting too caught up on guessing what medium it is. I can I can say things about the paintings without guessing what medium it is all day. I like the way the there's like I mean this would drive me crazy. Obviously, anyone who had horns would drive them crazy to have vines or seaweed or whatever this is hanging from their horns. That would be absolutely infuriating, but it looks nice for the photo. I like all the little shading. No, it looks cool. It's fun. I like that. All right, all right. This one, pretty crazy. Crying his eyes out of his eyes. In incredible anguish. There's a whole seascape on his back. Do you think this says something right here? I like it. 
I wonder if this was drawn in class instead of taking notes, because I feel like this is the type of thing I used to draw in class instead of taking notes, and not in a bad way either. It would keep me from daydreaming. You know, it looks like daydreaming. If I try to pay attention in class and not doodle, then I would daydream. This would keep me from daydreaming. I'd, there would some, it would occupy occupy the part of my mind that would normally daydream. I'd still be able to pay attention. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just trying to explain my way out of it. Maybe it, maybe it doesn't work at all. Cool drawing though. I like the way you can see the inside of its the cheek here. Is it like disintegrating, deteriorating? All right. Oh, got like a nice dip, you know, like a steel nib dip pen here. Very, just to tell, this is all very carefully done. Trace out the circles first and then come back in with, do you think this orange one was used? I guess it was a little bit here. It mostly looks like purple and yellow, maybe pink, purple and yellow, but it's pretty crazy how it, the gradients of ink to ink. Some places it's just ink. It's just pink or yellow or purple, you know. Uh, but some places it looks like it kind of switches from one to the other mid-stroke, which is a pretty cool effect. And pretty in general. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for showing that one. Very well done. It's a, you know what? You know, I've been kind of looking for uh, like a way to draw on black paper like this, and I think the dip pen might be a good way to do it. It's a good idea. All right. Here we have a cool painting. I would guess acrylic. Looks like, I almost think this is like a waterfall right here. And then the rest of this is some uh, otherworldly landscape. Like maybe these are little other little waterfalls and these are little coves and caves and stuff. Uh, and this is just another, it's just another planet coming up out of the ground. I don't know. This kind of debunked my theory, this little circle right here. So maybe this is a magma fall. There's lava down here. I love all the different colors tucked away inside of each other though, for sure. Very satisfying. And the white kind of coming along the edges of everything, highlighting. Mm -hmm. All right. Got some nice gold paint here. This is very, this is like not too complicated, you know? I'm not sure what this face is supposed to be though. The eyes are a little bit off-putting, how one of them has a pupil and one of them doesn't. <laughs> My throat. I'll be right back. Sorry. I feel like this is acrylic too, maybe. It almost seems like, like this pink stuff, the pink sunken pits of the eyes were painted on with like really thin pink paint or before the white was totally dried or something, I don't know. I don't really know what to make of this. Like what is it supposed to be? It reminds me of a piece of sushi lying on a cloth on a lily pad or something, but I don't think that's what it's supposed to be or a little, Japanese rushing nest and doll, or I just don't know what it is, but it looks nice. Are these actual things? Does this actually say something? I don't know. All right. We have good footage, and I mean footage. Uh, a good picture here, which I, another one I wish was straight down, you know, because I feel like I'm so far away from this part of the picture up here. I want to see this corner of the the cloud up there. Uh, no, but this looks awesome. I would guess this is markers, ink, ink and markers probably. Really, I love, obviously I'm a sucker for clouds, uh, which look great here. They look fantastic. And uh, these pants look awesome also. These are like, these are pretty much just like sharp clouds. So how that seems to me. This, along with the hair and this guy's melting flesh. 
Yeah, that's a cool style. I like that. There's some nice shading here. That's uh, the way you can, lay, you know, like layer markers. Probably like, it's probably like yellow on top of the green or something. I'm not sure that I have a lot of experience with markers. But yeah, sweet. All right. I walk like that sometimes. <laughs> I definitely uh, slouch like that. This is more how I sit. This posture right here is more how, definitely more how I sit than how I stand. My legs aren't quite that much longer than the rest of my body, but I like how you drew the uh, worn out, the ripped jeans, yeah. <laughs> this is fun. The, <laughs> the eyelids do bother me a little bit, but no, that's part of the style. I mean, if, I, if anyone else had drawn them that way, they still would have bothered me, you know, but... No, it's a cool drawing. I like it with the slime dropping down. It reminds me of like Nickelodeon or something, you know. Which was that show where they everyone just randomly got slimed all the time? I don't remember. Yeah, cool drawing though. I like it. Okay, okay. Dope bubbling skull. Blue bubbles, green goop. Red drops red spikes and black and white zebra stripes zigzagging out radiating from the center and it's on i feel like this is yeah it's on on a piece of canvas but the weird thing about it is this this stuff almost seems like it's like sharpie or something and i'll tell you the drawing with a marker on canvas obviously sometimes doesn't work that well because it like wears it out Actually, a lot of this seems like it could be marker. I'm not sure. No, I mean, I can see paint strokes here. I don't know why. I still don't know why. <gasps> More footage. Um, but, yeah. No, it looks sweet. It's kind of dizzying. Like the zig, the, the black and white lines on the, on the outside. It's like one of those optical illusions you look at and the center of it is moving out and the outside is moving in and you get sucked into it and next thing you know you've been staring at it for three and a half days and you, you've peed your pants. Now this looks like a like Studio Ghibli art, which I mean, I'm, I, should, I feel like I should be more reluctant to say that because I feel like you probably get that a lot if I would say that, you know? Because I feel like people say that a lot to me, like when I draw something... Oh, Peter, that looks like Howl's Moving Castle or something. I mean, not and not just about Studio Ghibli, but just like when you hear over and over again that something you do looks like something else, it's like you just want to be your own person, you know? It's fine. It looks awesome. That's what I want to say. It's really... It's just a comforting drawing. It's just adorable. Everything about this is just really like super well done and cute. And polished and adorable. I mean, even the bird has a little hat. I don't know if it's on purpose or not, but it looks like this rock and the bird has like a happy little shadow jumping out from behind it. Like, uh, you see that? Even the shadow's happy. And I love how you can, you drew this stuff underwater, you know, there's like a little sh fish there and a little. Even the little stalks of the lily pads you, you drew. No, oh, it's adorable. I want to be there. I don't know if I would be standing in the water, but I don't know why people do that so much. Stand stand in water. Also, I, I should probably be asking about what this tiny dinosaur is. Okay. This looks like a some sort of mechanized drafting table. Very interesting. It reminds me of the of a video I saw of a robot where it's, it was designed to drive, to drive away across the table, but it was plugged in. It had a very short cord, you know, and it would drive away and unplug itself and then die. 
That's what I think of when I see all these cables, but I don't think this is act. Is this supposed to move around? Like, are these le these legs don't really seem articulated? I mean, they don't seem powered. I don't like. I don't think this is supposed to move by itself. I think it's just maybe it's supposed to just give you the impression that it could, if it really wanted to. No, but this is definitely very interesting to look at because I mean, I put like weird like articulated arms and stuff in all lots of my drawings, so I'm definitely into this sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I definitely do. I like how there's still the little, the still the old, the other little legs that there on it that it doesn't need anymore. Now that it has these new, new and improved legs. You'll never stop me. Huh. This is, uh, this is really something. Waffle mouth. Checkerboard mouth. I like this. First of all, it's like a very gnarly, fleshy, like a very, like, almost not realistic. I mean, I haven't really seen a face like this before. Like the, But the skin is, like, very realistically rendered as far as just, like... Also, what is this right here? I never didn't notice that at first. But then, you know, then it just, like... This is totally different. Like, there's no shading or anything. It's just like, poof. Like, it was just, I can't tell if this is like something stuck in its mouth or if it was just like carved away and that's what it looks like on the inside. Maybe these are pearl necklaces around it. It's definitely, a, and it's got like a little reindeer nose, a little clown nose. Definitely kind of, definitely been somewhat off-putting, and uh, I like the back, the yellow background. I think yellow is a very strong color for a background like that, because it's almost cheerful in a lot of circumstances. But it's hard to make this sort of thing cheerful when it looks so almost grotesque, you know? Looks like an abomination. Oh. Uh. Mm. Music. Wonder what he's listening to. Are those are those beats by Dre? He's got the product in his hair. He's good to go. He's got the tunes on. Everything's good right now. I like it. And I like kind of the, uh, I mean, I kind of like the sketchy. I like, I like the sketchy approach when it's like, when it's like kind of like loose confidence sketches. And I mean, I'm sorry to keep harping on this, but I don't like the sketchy approach when it's like short, short stuttery lines like this. I mean, I mean, it's okay for me to have an opinion, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you right now, my opinion is that I don't like that as much. No, but this look, overall it looks good. Is this, do you think this is totally traditional art? I mean, like this shading is just like so smooth. Maybe it's just blended very well. It's pretty sweet. All right, this was a little bit weird to look at at first. I think the, that, to me, I don't know if this did for anyone else, but this this snake really like jumped out at me at first. I don't even know if I realized it was a snake at first, but it and and the fact that this is just the uh, I think this is drawing on like that gray or sepia, like tan off. It's off white paper, right? This is just the raw paper back there. Not if this isn't even drawn on, which makes me wonder. Is this paint? Like, what is this? What is this shade of gray right here? What do they paint on this with? What medium is this? Someone tell me. Is this oil pastels or something? It looks awesome. Like the, was it, would you call this negative space? I don't know the words for it all, but it's awesome. I like that a lot. It's really well done. Uh, it goes into the, I mean, it's super creepy. And, uh, yeah. 
And the little shading and shadow around it all, yep. To never be seen again. William Schmidt. Sailing off to the unknown. Once again, I love the ships. And this guy too, you know, he obviously, just like me, has, uh, you know, no idea what these ropes are for. But he knows that they're on there. They go from one place, uh, sometimes to nowhere. And then... They're just kind of out there around, and there's some poles, and then there's some of these. That's pretty much how I draw, you know, my ships too. So, hey, I'm right there with you, pal. And then, you know, the, sh the ship is either in front of this hulking monolith of a doodle, or it is um, joined to it. Maybe this is the adventure. This is the whole, the rest of the vessel. I like it. Really cool. Look at that. Fun textures. Yeah. Um, all right. What does this say? Do, it either says do think or don't think. I'm pretty sure this is a scan of a drawing. Uh, I just feel like the lines take on another very absolutely dark black quality when you scan it in and tweak the... I mean, it could just be a photo that was heavily tweaked, you know, the levels and stuff, which, I mean, I do that too. It's pretty cool that I like the way this curves around. It almost This back part of it kind of seems like a squid or something diving down into the ocean. And then, but then it's just he's got a coffee cup handle right here. So, But then here's the squid's eye. So it definitely is just a coffee cup squid with an orb, the Palantir, in it. All right here we have a seascape. Which is actually pretty great, because while it looks like there's not a lot going on there, I feel like it actually, you know, took a lot of work. There's even like a little bit of purple right here. Lots of different shades of green and blue coming a lot across here. A little, maybe even a little bit of yellow here. And then the little clusters of uh, white as the waves are breaking. It's very peaceful, very peaceful. You can almost feel yourself being there on the beach looking out at this, you know. Oh, okay. It's like uh, vanishing, vanishing points galore. These are sweet. For some reason, the way these are these are built, I imagine them as great hulking, like space vessels sitting here in a, just on like a huge open field. And I know these are maybe just like uh, reference lines drawn all around them, but I kind of s imagining that that's actually, uh, what's the word? Scaffolding, you know, and they're being still being constructed and then they'll take off. It's pretty sweet. I like the color, the color scheme. And I can't tell if this is actually way more washed out up here in this corner, if that's just the the way the photo was taken, there's just a light over here that's reflecting off the paper, but it looks pretty sweet. I like it. You, know, you drew all the way, all the places, all the intersections here. Like this is where these, t these, all these lines intersect. It's all very scientific. Okay, hey, you wouldn't understand the the science of the construction of space vessels. Just me and this guy. And Leonardo da Vinci, probably, who also drew a lot of stuff like this. So, yeah. Whoa. Is this Venom's Fortress of Solitude? What is going on here? I have no idea what this is, actually. Or, like, how it was made, or... 
I feel like it's a mixed media. If I, if I had to guess, I say I feel like I say that a lot. A lot. When would I ever have to guess? It's really cool. I like that a lot. So dense and dark. I feel like I can feel the texture of this stuff. And then this totally different texture right here. I don't know. And this totally different texture right here. And this. See, this part right here is definitely drawn with a pen. That little thing right here. And this part. I think a lot of this was just dense, heavy scribbles and cross hatching, and then it was scanned in, and then some other other stuff was added in the background or something. I don't know, but it's cool how it turned out. It looks like a, like a. To me, it makes me think of like a space station, like an a, abandoned, like mining, you know, asteroid mining colony, and it, some virus took over it. Maybe venom took over it. You know, it's covered in this black haunted goo or something I don't know oh my goodness I messed up again oh all right we have a trading card game card is this supposed to be for magic I don't know my trading card games very well Arrakis Shepherd of Spiders Legendary creature, insect shaman, reach, mentor, when Arrakis, shepherd of spiders, enters the battlefield, create three, one, four spiders, creature tokens within reach. The spiders would devour anything or anyone who dared enter the catacombs, except for Arrakis. Oh, I've been saying it wrong. It is Arrakis. Arrakis, he speaks, they listen. Most of the time. Vraska. Pretty sweet. Uh, I mean, obviously, spiders do creep me out big time. So I'm not, I'm not super into how creepy the spiders are. But I mean, maybe you are also creeped out by spiders, which helps you draw spiders that are more creepy. You know, you got to draw from that. Yeah. All right, I accidentally flipped a forward to this one a second ago, but Leah doesn't draw. Yeah, right. Fishing for compliments. Yeah, you do, Leah. This is amazing. No, I'm serious. It is amazing. It looks great. I love the color scheme too. The purple. What are these like? Amethyst or something? I don't know. I feel like I knew the word. Um, but anyways, uh, is she blind in this eye? Is this a glass eye? Once again, doing great work with little uh, highlights like this on the nose and lips, you know, eyes, around the eyes, ears. It's amazing how, how well also just like a thicker outline around the edge of everything does. It looks great. And the hair, you know, you've figured out hair way better than I have. I'm like, I'm with that other guy uh, who's drawn that, that one lady with, who tried drawing every single strand of hair. That's still kind of where I'm at, unless I just draw the outline of all the hair. So... You really figured something out here, which is uh, super cool. And this is obviously a mixed media piece, right? Like this looks like little clumps of paint here you've put in the hair for a highlight. So there's like ink, maybe watercolor, maybe gouache, or I don't have no idea what you're doing here, but it could even be acrylic or something. But yeah, that looks, that looks sweet. Okay. Someone taking a selfie in a mirror. I see that. I see you. And then overlaid with a photo of lightning. And then there's these creepy red eyes. That reminds me of the, the Reddit alien. That rem Snoo? Is that what it's called? This, no, this, this is a cool little mashup, though. I like that. It's creepy. It's definitely eerie. Yeah. I like it. Hmm. 
Okay. This is from an anime. I know I've seen this guy before. I'm sorry I don't know which anime this is from. It's a pretty popular one. I know that much, right? It's from some popular anime. So we got some fan art here of one character licking another character, which I'm guessing didn't actually happen in the show, but this person really wished it had. So they fulfilled their own fantasy by drawing it happening. Fair enough. Cool shorts, though. Are these like Sherpa, Sherpa jorts? Fleece-lined jorts? Let me get some of those. Let me get a pair of those. That's what I meant it with this picture. No. Also, no, it looks good. Uh, I like the, the background here with the clouds and everything. No, this, no, this, is, this is well done, though. Well done. Yeah, keep it up. Hey, you do you. I'm not, I'm not. You, you make, some people will be like, fan art's not real art or something, but not me. <laughs> Looks like he's got another finger under his eye. It's probably where his eyeball fell down into. This is creepy. It's like he's turning... He's the beast. He's that guy... That chick from X-Men, you know? Who can turn into... He has the scales and blue and... Maybe he's just been to too many warped tours. But... It's all love, baby. It's all love. No, I like it. It's like a very... Kind of angular... Um... Style. But still, there's like... You still got the subtle shading at the end of the nose and under the eyes and everything. Sorry. I've been sitting here for a while. I feel like the people who are at the end of this are going to get... I'm going to be more sassy with them than the people in the front. So, I mean, that's just bad luck, I guess. No, but it looks sweet. Ooh. Hey, no sass here. This looks awesome. Plain awesome. It's like some crazy... It's levitating head. I like that. It's swirling, spurting blood out of the eyes. Yeah, little blood things. I don't know how to describe really anything that's going on here, but uh, also it's weird that they're just arm stumps. Weird in a good way, of course. Usually when I say it's weird, I mean it as a very honest compliment. Yeah. And obviously he's starving. Get in my tummy. I mean belly. One of my greatest strengths is misquoting things. So just go ahead and get used to that. All right. All right. A very uh, crisp painting here. Really very crisp. Acrylic? None of my acrylic paintings ever look this sharp and refined. Why? Someone help me. Tell me. Am I just too... Uh, do I, am I just not careful enough? I love the background color here. The, the whole color scheme is incredible. Really very good. Little berry, are these berries or little pollen pods? or I don't know what's going on here, but it, it looks like Dippin' Dots. And I don't even really like Dippin' Dots that much, but I want them. I want them real bad. But really, the little gradients of color here is beautiful, and the leaves. Oh, yeah, I like it. All right, some skulls here. Some of these, I mean, this one would be a little bit difficult, you know. But some of these can make some really cool stickers, you know. Especially this one already looks like a sticker you've got. I mean, the only thing that bothers me... <laughs> Also, one of my best skills is nitpicking. Is that the shadows are different. Like this one has a drop shadow, almost just like a dark outer glow, like a drop shadow going all around all of it. And this one doesn't have a drop shadow on this side at all. All right, so none of that actually matters. And this one doesn't have a drop shadow on this part very much at all, but then there's like a drop shadow down here, but not on the little... Okay, no, that part doesn't really matter at all. The, 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 the skulls themselves look really cool. You've got a really cool style going here definitely i like it it's like they're all the same style but it's still a, a good variety which i appreciate 
Mm-hmm. All right. Got some Grim Reaper fan art here. Some sort of a circle for summoning things or sending people places that they'd rather not be. Ag- Agamemnon, the ancient. 6 8. I'm hoping that was the 6th of August and not June 2008. Grim Reaper. We, I think these are like all of his uh, accessories and everything. We got his, his uh, was this like his Necronomicon or something? His bottle opener, a couple of his favorite wands, his staff here. That's a bone he broke once. Just fell right out of his cloak. This is ritual necklace, of course. This is welcome mat. This is spare hand. His other Necronomicon. Close up of his face when he turns the headlights on. His other ritual necklace. The medallion one. This is where he sits and thinks about things, and this is when he goes, ta da. Now you know Agamemnon, the ancient one. It's pretty sweet, though. No, I like doing this. This is kind of like what I did with Barth the other day with all my post it notes. Just draw, draw like a bunch of little cool things about him, you know? It'll kind of flesh him out a little bit as a person. Pretty sweet. All right. Another, I think, I think this is a digital collage. Like, I don't, I think this was superimposed on here, so to say. Was this flower glowing or is that just because there was like a, the, the light just caught it right? It's a pretty picture though. I feel like this could be on the back of a, like on the back of a Sufjan Stevens album or something, you know, that that sort of thing. Some sort of weird indie, indie music album cover, you know, sort of deal. It's kind of got that, that vibe, that feeling to it. Definitely. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Okay. So apparently it is possible to draw convincing hair while drawing every single strand. Apparently you just have to be extremely skilled. Okay. Thanks for proving me wrong and showing me up at the same time. Amazing. The eyes look amazing. Look at that. I'm not quite sure what's going on with some of these, like, like, what are these? Like, thicker clumps of hair. They look very intentional, so I don't think it's like an accident or something. But, you know what I mean? Like, what's going on right there and right there? What are these little things? It's just like a thicker, shiny clump of hair hanging down. But, yeah. Is is this another one of those off-white pieces of paper? It could just be newsprint, actually, or something. And yeah, because then I think there's like some more of those highlights. Just I can't tell if this is brighter than the actual color of the paper. Anyways, I think I think this is like a gel gel pen highlights right there. Obviously, this is very expertly done. Her. I mean, I'm afraid to nitpick it too much and say that, like, the back of her head looks weirdly shaped or something because I feel like this person is legs ahead of me. So I won't say that. It looks amazing. I love. I just love the, the wispy, the wispy hairs. I don't know how you did that without actually just, like, putting some actual hairs on there and scanning it in, you know? They look amazing. Like, what, what kind of pencil did you use for that? Is this just a huge piece of paper? Maybe it's just a huge piece of paper. And so you could just use like, you could use a, like a king sized Sharpie to do these lines and they just look that small. Maybe this is like the size of a gymnasium, this drawing. Okay. <laughs> I, I just realized this is like perforated because it's been torn out of a sketchbook. But at first, for some reason, I thought these were icons. 
from like a like folders on a desktop as like a screenshot or something. I was like, why are these up here? This looks sweet though. Yeah, got the texture draw. It's like a little platform made out of some organic mountain. I love the texture and the the shading here. Yeah, and color it in. Yeah, it's very satisfying. Nice little nooks and crannies. Like it looks very, very convincingly 3D, right? Yeah. Yeah, keep playing around with that. I feel like there's so much you can do. I mean, you can draw anything now that you... I feel like once you kind of get a hold of how to make shapes like this, you're you're good to go. All right. Oh, yeah, see, I feel like this is what I thought someone was doing earlier with the... The, the non-waterproof ink and a water pen. That's what I was talking about, right? So here we got the, what's this called? A few day nib, feud, few day nib, right? So you can either use the very, the very tip of the nib here or tilt the pen back and get thicker lines. So it's a good way to have lots of line variety and then you can come back over it with the, with the water pen and Get all these cool ink washes, which did turn out really cool, especially, ooh, these mountains. I love those. Yeah, I like those a lot. Yeah, it turned out great. I, I want to try that some more. I have a few day nib. I don't, I have like a, at least two few day nib pens. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. In fact, it's killing me not knowing if I'm saying it right, but I have at least two of these. I don't know if I've actually done a video on either of them yet. All right. Escape from your reality. This person has spent a lot of time in what I assume is like a nice uh, meditative, you know, like like a zone out doodly trance. Maybe that's what they mean, escape from their reality. You know, I feel like that's what that was going on there. Just practice some nice stippling right here. Do you think that they drew all this and then th there's this empty space up here and then they were like, I think I'm just ready to be done. So they just like colored it all in black up there to finish it off. I feel like that's exactly what I would have done. It's not like a bad thing, okay? You can admit it, it's fine. It's okay. This reminds me of Shel Silverstein's uh, Math Machine. Anyone know what I'm talking about? That poem with the math machine with the kid stuck inside or whatever? I don't remember exactly. Not nearly this complicated. It's always, every time I go back and look at that machine in that poem, it's always less complicated than I remember. Every time I, I think about it and remember it, and it gets more complicated and more intense and intricate as I remember it. And so then I draw it and I get inspired by it and I draw more and more complicated things and I go back and look at it. And it's like super simple. It's like 10 lines practically. So no, but this is cool. It looks like a big piece of paper too. All right. Look at that. Wow. Now this one, this should do one-on-one -on -one naval battle with the yellow submarine, I feel like. Definitely win. Hands and fins and flippers down. And complimentary ghosts, too. And whatever this guy is. Got a little pilot, fish head pilot. It's beautiful. The colors, gorgeous. It's got a little aquarium inside. Oh, it's got the, the yellow submarine is probably flying around in there somewhere. Not even realizing that it's inside this great. All these teeth are amazing. I love those teeth. These little rainbow fish scales. Great drawing, great drawing. All right. Oh, that's it. That's all the... That's all of them. That's it. We've looked at all the drawings. That was 176 drawings. I had to take a break in the middle. Uh, it might have only been like 175 or 174, but regardless, irregardless, um, we'll do some more later. Hey, follow me on Twitter, and every now and then I tweet. It'll probably be several months before I do this again. So you have time to draw something else. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you, uh, you know, I'll be making other videos about other stuff too. And uh, so stick around. Good to see y'all. 
Uh, I know this is a long video, so yeah, thanks for chilling. All right. Uh, if you made it all the way here to the end of the video, say in your in your comment somewhere, if you want to leave a comment, just as like a secret message that you made it all the way to the end, say, hey, P Eater, like you're saying, hey, Peter, but put the P from Peter at the end of hey, like you made like a little typo. You know what I'm saying? Like, so H-E-Y-P space E-T-E-R. It'll be like our secret message that you made it all the way. Hey, Peter. Yeah. Anyways, all right. See you all around. Have a good day. Thanks for making art and drawing. If you submit anything, thank you. It was all amazing. Okay. Y'all take it easy. I'll see you later. I'm going to go uh, get like a lozenge or something.